Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Edge of Legend, Season 2, Episode 10, I believe, um, where we will be continuing the story of the case of the Imperial Tiger. Uh, but as we go into that, first, I want to uh, do a quick introduction to all these fine uh, players here, starting with Sam and her mug, Frug. Please, Hi. Sam. <laughs> That's right. We we have christened this mug, Frug. Um, I'll push up a little bit higher so they can see it. Oh, oh, yeah, thank you, you chat, for um, giving Frug a name. It is the right name. Uh, am I doing my intro now? I did <laughs> yes, Frog's intro. This is Frog. He plays my mug. Um, and I'm Sam Sterling. I play Ichipokton Papakui, also known as La Pacific Pacifica Dorita. Oh, dear. <laughs> Frog <laughs> stole the spotlight. And our pronouns are she, her. Lovely. Well, um, moving on, uh, Kylie, please tell us who you are, who you play, and what your pronouns are. Hi, I'm Kylie, where I go by Kai. It really doesn't matter at this point. I play Shionimus, the Elven Ranger. We both go by she, her. Lovely. Next up is Sydney. Sydney, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello. My name is Sydney Rubino. I play Alona, the half elf cloistered cleric, and my pronouns are she, her. Great. Last and certainly not least, Michael. Tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hey, everybody. As always, I am Michael Pow, and I play the fabulous Rufa, and our pronouns are he, him, they, them. Excellent. Well, I guess that just leaves little old me. My name is PJ McGaw. I am the GM for Edge of Legend and Nat 20 Productions official here on Twitch. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'll be playing everyone and everything in between. Uh, and before we go to the recap, I just want to take a quick moment to uh, say thank you to Joe, our amazing TD that you heard earlier, making sure that we have an amazing show every week. Uh, my brain has always been scattered at the end, and I always want to say thank you, Joe, at the end. So I figured I'm going to do it at the start and then maybe sandwich at the end today. So thank you so much, Joe, for all your awesome hard work. We would not look and sound as amazing as we do without you. With that being said, let's go into our recap for last week's episode of Edge of Legend. If you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, you can go to the YouTube's Nat 20 Pros and see Kylie do an awesome job of catching y'all up on, on the YouTubes. And uh, what y'all missed last week... Um, after being told about the Imperial Tiger that may be threatening the Dragon Emperor of Shin, and some of us finding out there was an actual dragon as the Emperor of Shin, uh, they found this cart, uh, this, this carriage going around uh, town after some very intimidating and awkward moment. They realized this is a carriage uh, that is being owned and operated by a vampire mafia in the nation of Shin, the Hungry Ghosts, um, specifically Zhongxi. And after making a deal with them to get information that could help them find the Imperial Tiger, uh, they go to their warehouse. They basically decide to say, hey, for the information you're going to give us, we're going to give you a stake in your very own theater in Shin. And with an awesome sales pitch and a high check, sure enough, they are able to sell the theater to uh, the Jung Shi. Uh, and after that, they give them all this information where they find out that um, an individual, a general of the emperor, had already been out looking for the tiger and that they may have some informational whereabouts from their findings uh, in the town of Shengjin where they last were. So now they speed off to go back to where they started in Shin to find the horse general, Ma Shu, to learn where this tiger could be found. And before anything happens, immediately, as you get into the carriage, uh, uh, basically a loner carriage to go back to the town, you're handed a red envelope. Opening it up inside, there's a letter uh, in beautiful uh, Shin uh, handwriting it says we may have been greedy regents and continue to suffer for it but respecting the dead is always honorable you have our thanks signed master and madame gui inside this letter is a black coin a token or of favor and debt sorry about that fireworks i guess this coin can be used to either buy off death one time 
So if you're, you know, dead, you know, dying four, dying five, and by rules would be dead, this coin would evaporate in your hand as it pays the debt that you owe death. Or you can use it to summon loyal Jiangxi members of the Hungry Ghosts or the 88 Ghosts or the Hungry Smile Mafias. So you can use this for a power play or you can use this to survive combat. But you have this black coin, thick. Uh, it's circular with kind of a squarish cutout in the center. And um, there's no writing on one side. And on the other side, Rufa, you see uh, the symbols for basically like life and death and fortune. Question. If we get, if we use it to be brought back to life, if it ever comes to that, and we haven't used it to summon members for something, does that come with any repercussions? Like, for example, are we undead? As far as you can tell, it just brings you back from the dead. It stops you from dying ent entirely. Hmm. One time. So, and also you said that it was in sh uh, Chinese. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing only Rufa could really read it too, about the instructions and everything. Absolutely. Yeah, the whole thing. Uh, the letter of thanks, the coin, and what's on the coin. Only, only Rufa can read that and understand that. All right. Wait, does uh, Rufa tell us? <laughs> Rufa tells you to a certain extent. I fucking knew it, Michael. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. <laughs> the coin thing, he will say, you will hold up the coin and goes, oh, a little bubble. Oh, wait, wait. Actually, I do have a coin here. A, a, little, a little bubble. Hmm. Hmm. That was that was kind of hmm. a little something to, uh, in case we uh, find ourselves in dire need. Is it money? Is it for, can we buy uh, buns with it? Let us just say it is to pay at all if we ever find ourselves in mortal danger it could be quite useful ah bridges <laughs> death buns <laughs> you summon death buns <laughs> yeah. they don't all have to make sense <laughs> uh so we're on um we're on our way back to the to the city um do we have any leads on where this um horse general is or are we just going to start looking randomly throughout the city that's a very good question unfortunately the only memory that you had so far is that you did see him last in the city that you were just in which was approximately about an hour carriage right away give or take we should play a game with the coin while we're in the carriage on our on our way we should flip the coin and Do suddenly, I like a ship, a, a bunch of uh, <laughs> just appears around. Maybe not. Um, okay. I, well, I did we say, huh? Go I was going to say, did, I don't. Are we hand waving that we got rooms at the local inn or not? You, I believe you talked about that. But either way, you can definitely go and buy rooms at the local tavern. It's it's definitely big enough. Can we to, just say we had? We just hand wave and say we, we got rooms before we yeah. left. Absolutely. It's fine. Um, so is there like a court, not a courthouse, like um, a military base in the city that we would know to look for Barracks? for this person? Barracks? Yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone can give me either a society check or a warfare lore check. Sorry, I'm actually good at that. You're good at most things, Michael. I hate to break it to you. It's Unless like, it's, it's fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty shit when it comes to fighting. That's or survival. Awesome. And survival. <laughs> Same with the evil laugh. <laughs> Sorry. That was, that was pretty good. I need a chance to do that every now and then. Uh, yeah. I get um, my, do, do I get my case uh, bonus? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I, I got a six. Oh, go ahead. No, no, Sydney. Was that 16? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Kylie, what was your roll? Did you roll? It was a one. So it was a one. not really paying attention. That's fair. I uh, got a oh. 16 as well. 16 as well. And Mike, what'd you get? Got a 29. Oh, 
freaking course somebody has to that's amazing i will okay. by the way i rolled a 14 <laughs> okay damn uh you have a plus 15 i guess that makes sense for an expert maybe I was 14 plus one. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. that's right plus the the thing for the, mm -hmm. the thing okay cool 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 well uh either way you realize that um so a general in general, would probably have uh, their own residency. They're no, they're so high up on the chain of military command. They're no, really, they're no longer really slumming it with the people in the barracks. So they probably have their own land, their own title. They would have their own place to live. However, um, you all do remember that, uh, according to a report you heard, Mashu was working to also. Uh, basically create defenses in this city. He was there to ensure that when they start putting military occupants in Shengjin, they know how to defend it, they know how to fight in it, they know how to bolster it. So he's probably uh, sleeping in that city, probably living somewhere with really great accommodations because he is one of the five generals. Okay. Uh, Rufo looks at the group and goes, well, considering he is an officer, he would not be staying in the local barracks with his men, but uh, he would have perhaps uh, more nicer accommodations, uh, perhaps, uh, but would be within the city, so would uh, behoove us to perhaps uh, ask around. That should be, it should be pretty common knowledge. Like, so it, it would be common knowledge, right? <laughs> Yeah, people. The, the guy wears bright gold and green armor and rides a horse whose hooves click fire. Yeah, the, the guy oh, okay. stands it's not out. Subtle. Not no. subtle. He's a general. What's he got to hide? All right. Um. So I guess ask around for where that is. Diplomacy okay. checks for asking the town folk about where the general lives. Oh wait, wait. I, I got an idea. I got an idea. Well, can, can we also all roll to see if there's a Bun Boys franchise? We can ask the Bun Boys franchise where it is. I like the way you think. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll have one of you roll for Bun Boys, and everyone else can roll for location of the general. Sam. I, I, I vote Sam. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Sam. <laughs> Sam, you. I'll let you roll for Bun Boys. <laughs> oh, no. Did you see my hero play? It was you so oh, it was already. <laughs> oh, you said it. I don't care. You have to have, you have, to have priorities. I hear it. What's oh, the... no. What's the skill? Uh, it would be uh, society or diplomacy. Oh, okay. If I add diplomacy, it's a 13. If I add society, it's a six. Okay. Uh, so you know that Shin resides behind the biggest natural land fissure in the entire planet. And the Bun Boys have been located on a continent in the opposite hemisphere as this. They there's a very strong chance there's no bun boys in Shin yet. Rufa, yet. when we're not doing something so serious, I have a proposition for you. Oh. But go on, continue with what you're doing. It looks like it's really important. Ruf, Rufa, Rufa thinks he knows uh, along the lines of what Freni Ichi is thinking. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Uh, okay, so unfortunately, no bun boys. But maybe, maybe if if uh, if the two the two boys can get uh, a trip from Eastwood's door, who knows? Maybe they can start a franchise here. But that being said, uh, I want to know who rolled um, the other checks to find this general. Because it's also society and uh, diplomacy. As you're asking around and either using your knowledge of the culture or just being very polite. Um, I got a twenty-three for diplomacy. Okay. 14 diplomacy. 14 diplomacy. All right. And Michael, what you got? We live in a society. I got a 24. Okay. Um, so, Shionibus, you're looking around, uh, you're asking around about it, and you do hear that General Mashu has put his legendary horse uh, in the best, uh, best stable in the city. Um, this horse is weighted on hand and foot, 
um, and is revered as highly as the general is. This Horus is practically declared a hero of the country. The horse goes by the name uh, Liang Ma, um, as the horse was basically bred in the Liang uh, territory, province, sorry, the Liang province, and is basically the, the best horse in the best place to get horses from. He's the goodest boy. He's the goodest boy of horses. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so, um, so you hear about this legendary horse and that you hear stories about how, uh, you know, the general had to tame him and, you know, they, they bonded in war and, and all these uh, stories. So if you can't find him, you know, he's going to visit that horse like at least twice daily. So you can always go find him that way. Uh, Sydney and Michael, because your numbers are basically the same, you both are, are told that um, when he leaves uh, Shengjin to go basically to the north end of it, there is a really nice manor that one of the local lords lets him stay at. But when he's not up there, he crashes in the exact same tavern you all do, free of charge in the most VIP uh, estate, because again, he's one of the five generals for the emperor of their nation. So people tend to kind of lavish him with service. So we could either go to the stables, go to a fancy mansion, or a bar. Same bar you guys had a amazing five-star uh, meal at. Hmm. I'm not putting the bill this time. <laughs> Just point, putting that out there. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. We both cut magical fish and got lots of money. I'll do it. It's okay. <laughs> Um, I you mean, got that magical fish money. Oh, damn! An yeah, economy man. based around magic fish. <laughs> Listen, everyone needs some. Um, they're not Swedish though. Mm. Disappointing. Um, so what does everyone think? Do we want the, the the Woodward in me wants to go to the bar, um, but the Alona in me wants to go to the stables, and um. Who, what, thoughts? Well, it would be most logic, honestly, to go to the general's residence if he is not there. Then we go to his uh, favorite watering hole. And if he's still, further still, not there, then we wait by the stables. What do you got against horses, Rufa? I, this just, honestly, this is the most logical uh and straightforward way Morelle was humble okay. opinion <laughs> Morel kind of raises his hand he goes oh maybe you could always split the body uh you know we could look in three places uh quicker i think we could split the party we could do that do we want to do that cover I think more I ground would get lost on like honestly honestly look at me look at me do you think I, I can do this myself? Honestly, also at this point, I think we should just call ourselves Edge of Splitting the Party. <laughs> you know, Edge of Cohesion. All right. Uh, let's go to the mansion first. Make sure Ichi doesn't get lost in the crowd. A lot of people. Um, and uh, how do we even get up to the mansion? Aren't there going to be guards there or something? Or no, because he's a general and everyone's like, nah, he can defend himself. We could always ask one of his uh, the soldiers to get out a message for us if he is dead. Great. Let's go. Okay. So going to the manor that he uh, allegedly is staying in, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So uh, everyone give me a survival check as you, once you get back to, Sh <laughs> to Shengjin, you kind of go into some uh, deep forest that's not really well um, turned into a road, shall we say? Uh, so there's there's like a there's a path, but you could probably lose your way on this path if you're not paying close attention. Seventeen. Okay, seventeen. Twenty six. Twenty six. Nice. It's a survival check. I got a five. <laughs> Rufus yes. stubs his toe. <laughs> Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen. So as you're all walking, 
Rufus is kind of looking up and enjoying the scenery or whatever the reason is, he for sure gets lost. Uh, thankfully, everyone is able to grab him, get him back in the line, and you you walk to the uh, uh, the manor just fine. It does take you a bit of a walking time, but you get there. I, I, I just realized something. I just realized something. Rufa, Rufus, Mr. Magoo. Oh, oh no. my God. <laughs> Oh no! With his low survival skills, he's mis- he's fantasy Mr. Magoo. Oh dear! Oh, right. You did it again, Rufa. How did you go? You're not wrong. My dad hated that character. I remember growing up hearing my dad literally say that he hated Mr. Magoo because he was so angry at the fact that when he was a kid, he didn't understand why he didn't open his eyes to see. Um, yep. Yep. That was that was we, my relationship yeah. with that character. <laughs> we we had a we had a complicated relationship with Mr. Magoo in the Magaw household. So we loved him, but we hated yeah. him. Yep. You have to mm-hmm. wrestle what, to the death. Oh, we it was a knife fight every time. It was we were called Magoo and McGraw and all all kinds of things. I, I still want to point out that real life Michael's sense of direction is not is pretty much on par with Rufus' sense of direction in real life. That's why we got GPS. Uh, I, I could get lost with a GPS. I gotten lost with a GPS. I mean, I've almost driven off the Hollywood Hills with a GPS. No, why? No. Don't, don't do that. Don't he's, do that. He's alive though. He's alive. We, yeah, we I'm have still you here. here now, and that's yes. all that matters. Uh, so anyway, that being said, you eventually get to uh, this big forest clearing. Uh, the trees are are uh, kind of knocked down. You see tall grass. You see beautiful uh, but small farmland. And you see easily 20, 30 heavily armed guards and this gorgeous four-story mansion. Um, it's definitely like a big kind of like a geometric uh, uh, perimeter with a kind of slanting top to it, uh, kind of multi-tiered. And there is uh, a man wearing... Uh, the kind of heavily plated armor uh, of the culture with this really big long sword behind him and he kind of grabs it with with one hand and then kind of puts a hand out saying like stop Alona high fives the hand give me a diplomacy check it looks so friendly (laughs) well he didn't look friendly but the high five uh... does she get a bonus for how cute she is no i'm sorry no damn okay. it but do you hear how hard that was for him to say no i i would say that's a win ha um i don't need it though because i rolled an 18 on the die face and my <laughs> diplomacy bonus is a 10 so yeah so you, i am already cute <laughs> you you high five this guy and you sit there just adorably just with your hand up or just waiting and he looks at you looks at his hand High fives you back. But then he just goes. Like he's like waving you off. Oh, oh, Alona immediately realizes her mistake, but is happy they bonded already. Um, okay. Um, does this person speak common or no? Don't know yet. He hasn't really verbalized anything yet. Cool. Um, Lonish pokes Rufa. Hey. This is just for Nolona. Well, I mean, I already gave him a high five, so I think that's points in our favor, but um, he looks like he really doesn't want to let us in. Uh, oh, yes, yes, he, he does. Mm, yes. Uh, Rufa goes over to the, the guard in common first, just to see if he understands common. Mm-hmm. Uh, we request an audience with uh, the general. He looks at you, confused and disappointed, and then and just then, kind of like waits, like uh? Rufa then repeats it in Shin. Hmm. He in Shin he, re- he responds, "Oh, I was wondering why that came out of this amazing Shin." 
face yeah no uh so sorry i'd have no idea what she did hitting my hand but she seemed to not be a threat uh, these are friends of rufa from out of town oh out of town yeah i would imagine they're from out of town town. they would almost have to be yeah yeah he's he's looking at that no no one here is shimmies i don't yeah i'm not buying it for a minute that they're locals uh but yeah no uh so sorry the general's not here actually ah i don't get it uh do you May we ask if uh, where is what is the general? Well, normally I would tell you to buzz off, but your delightful foreigner friend, uh, I I don't know why I feel like I can trust her. She just she looks like a sticky bun, like she's just not going to do anything bad ever. Um, but yeah, we can as long as you don't tell anyone I told you, we're fine. I guess it's just. It it will be a, 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 a little secret. Okay. Uh, well, he got sick and tired of doing the multi-hour drive to go check on his horse, so he's still at the tavern uh, going over ah. defense plans for the city. Um, he might be staying there for the foreseeable future because he doesn't like to go too far from his horse. Ah. Ah. Yes, yes. Ruf, Rufa, Rufa, thanks you for uh, the information, and we hope you have a rest of a good night it, it, out of character it is night right uh it's yeah it's getting there it's getting pretty late michael uh, i have an out of character question for you yes if you're talking in shinies right now would you not be speaking in an accent <laughs> rufa would still speak oh, in sure. that accent oh my god okay that's valid that's valid i was just he's really committed like, he's committed really committed to the bit Oh my god. I love it. Uh Rufa turns over to the wrestling group. Uh our friend here, the god, uh has informed Rufa that uh, the general he is at the the, the tavern. Hmm. Well, then we should go there. <laughs> uh Alona looks at looks at Ichi and says. Um, well, since we're going to the tavern and you were very adamant about sampling the local cuisine, are you equally as adamant about sampling the local liquid cuisine? So I, I know Woodward isn't with us anymore. I mean, he's somewhere. He's with someone. He's not with us. Um, but just because he's not around does not mean that it, I do not want to get totally blasted. Anytime. Yeah. So yes, the answer is yes. Oh yes, uh, Rufa recommends the fermented uh, sogrum uh, liquor. Uh, oh, the, the there's some very good rice wine too as well. Oh, some ooh, the body. But honestly, Rufa thinks everybody would quite enjoy the plum wine. Ah. <gasps> That sounds yummy. All right. So after an hour trip back to the city, uh, Shongjin, um, the tavern, of course, is booming. Lanterns that are being hung on different uh, posts, uh, both vertical and horizontal, coming out of this uh, amazing three-story tavern are lit with a, a small candle. So you see a bright red and orange glow all over this building. It lights up almost like one big tea candle. Um, getting close inside, there's many different lanterns, uh, collected inside. So it's a bright orange glow all over the place and it is popping. You are seeing many different regents and like lesser nobles of the court are here and drinking and they're getting very rowdy. Uh, you're able to spy a few Zhongxi that you recognize from the hungry ghosts kind of trying to hide their face so they can stalk prey. Um, aside from that, it's, it's a tavern at night in a merchant town. It's popping. What do you do? Uh, um, well, Alona is socially overwhelmed. Um, so she goes and stands next to Shionibus and is like, ah, uh, there's a lot of people here. It's how you say popping. Um, uh, yeah, taverns uh, usually are. Right. 
Uh, Rufus said there was something about plum wine. Have you ever had plum wine before? Uh, no. I don't know. Maybe. I've had a lot of drinks in my travels, so who knows? Do you want to, Shionavis, do you want to have plum wine with me? Sure. Why not? <laughs> okay. Alona's going to she probably can't shuffle over to the bar because there's too many people she politely elbows with like gentle elbows to the bar okay uh the bartender uh looks to you in a crazed fury as they're trying to pour drinks for very rowdy rich people who are constantly demanding drinks uh uh, hi hi there uh yes yes, yes. come 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 on down uh what, what can i get for you what would you like a bottle of plum wine and five cups, please. Great, great. Uh, you know what? Just to make my life a little easier, uh, I'm going to sell you two. Is that okay? Just that we don't have to come by for a refill. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, one second. He goes under, under the desk and you hear this like treasure chest opening this and then pulls out two big bottles that are just smoking from from ice in the fresh air he corks them and then gives you like five glasses here you go uh be careful to spill it no refunds for broken wine can, can, can i can i uh request that these aren't like your regular western cups they're like like little saucers they're like, oh yeah like little it saucers. would definitely definitely be the, the actual rice wine glasses that uh are customary <clears throat> um i don't have enough hands help Rufa helps holding one of the the pots of um of uh plum wine. Okay, thank you. As you as you walks away, he kind of puts a hand on your hand and goes, "Listen, I, I I should warn you. Be very careful. There is um a very powerful man here today. Um, he's he's already had a lot of drinks and he may challenge someone to a fight. Please, <laughs> for the sake of your safety, don't don't challenge him to a fight." Uh, no, it won't be me. And she walks away. Um, <laughs> Does Rufa overhear this? Uh, yeah, he's talking to both of you about this. He, he doesn't, Rufa doesn't say anything. He just looks over at Itchy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Helena also looks at Shiona. <laughs> like, I don't know, Rufa. Either one of these. <laughs> um, so I assume they got a table. We put money on this? <laughs> Oh yeah, sure thing. You get a table. I mean, because you gotta drink somewhere, and standing up in this place is not an option. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of recessed seating, like recessed uh, uh, booths with low tables and very nice pillows and and couches. Um, you can you can sit there. There's one massive table in the center, and it becomes apparent that this long massive table is kind of the cause of the the ruckus. There's probably about twenty, thirty of these people of the imperial court who are just abusing the privilege of having too much money and too much alcohol ew um oh. go ahead michael oh, um also do you mind also rufa just kind of grabs a little plate of um because usually have these at bars like the bar snacks which would be like roasted peanuts with the uh, that's tossed in salt and chili mm -hmm. sounds good yeah, absolutely. They, they give you uh, a small little bowl with those uh, those snacks. Um, and you are free to drink your wonderful plum wine. If you are drinking the plum wine, give me a fortitude save. Oh, no. This was a mistake. Um, Alona just wants to bond with friends. Uh, fortitude save. I got a natural 20. <laughs> yes, Ichi. There yes. we go. Now I can see it. I, I got an unnatural 20. <laughs> nice. Dirty 20. Critical 20. What'd you get from me, Kai? 26. 26. Nice. What'd you get, Sydney? Yeah, I actually got a 22, so I'm not mad. Hmm. No, no, you're all doing great. Um, it's very sweet. It's it's very cool. And as you and as you drink it, it just kind of chills you all the way down in a very loving, a lovely, loving, refreshing way. There we go. Uh, as you're drinking this plum wine. It's like maybe the second or third drink or, or little uh, drinking dish that you start to kind of feel a bit of a, a bit of a fun, lighthearted pink in your cheeks, a little bit of jolly across your nose. Um, 
And then you all hear the unmistakable sound of a wood table being thrown across the tavern. And you hear a loud, very loud, boisterous laugh. Is there a neigh in there too? A neigh? <laughs> like no. a horse neigh? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, darn. Um, is it the horse general? <laughs> Um, perception check. I will also look at this ruckus. Same. Uh, 21. Perception. 23. 23. Got a, one second. I need to add. That is a 29. Damn. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Kyla, did you get a perception check? No, because she knows when she hears that, you need to have your head down if you don't want to start a fight. All right, so doing the whole, like, uh, I'm not going to pay attention to this nonsense. So mm -hmm. as, as Shionibus ducks her head, the rest of you kind of go, huh? And you look, and you see, standing on a pile of bodies, living, but, you know, like, wrestle to the ground, uh, a dwarf with big black spiky hair, a red headband, a black bushy beard, and big black bushy eyebrows. He's got these really intense eyes. Um, and he's, he's wearing no shirt. He's got uh, pants tied at the waist with a sash and boots tied off with a uh, cord. He's got um, gauntlets with uh, kind of like little studs coming out of them. And he's just standing on these guys as it like, like arms up and he goes, the mountain says you owe all me a drink because you're way too weak to defeat the mountain. The mountain doesn't crumble under pressure. The mountain stands firm. Mountain is over dramatic. <laughs> she says uh. to her group and her group only. <laughs> Ah, uh, screams. Ah, uh, wow. Um, Alona looks at Ichi. <laughs> Ichi. Oh, no, go ahead, Michael. What's up? Say, if, if Lo Alona looks at Ichi, Rufus going to look at um, Chonabes. <laughs> She's not going to look up from her drink. She's just like, well, that sucks. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Mm. Alona. Uh, Ichi, uh, the, the, you could totally kick his ass. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And he's Should being I? really loud and obnoxious. Should I? Should I? Wait, wait. Should I? Should I kick his ass? <laughs> Are you Rufus the drama? Gonna, Rufus going to gonna gonna lean over to Ichi and whispers. Don't forget, unless you're getting paid. Am I getting paid? I'm going to go find out. <laughs> Alona tries to slip 10 gold in Ichi's pocket. <laughs> Wait, why do I need 10 gold? Well, Ichi didn't see that, so. Did not. All right, so you're, you're just walking up to the mountain? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. All hey, right. the mountain. The mountain hears a new voice. Who could it possibly be? Well, uh, hello. He hello. Um, is it a requirement to speak about ourselves in the third person? I should know no. that before getting into this. Not at all. The mountain is just aware of how their hard work has made them amazing. Okay. Ichi drops to the floor and like looks at somebody who's on the ground that he's standing on. It's like, is is he amazing? Is that how you feel? They they look terrified. They kind of like you know like nod their head and kind of like nod yes. And they go yes yes yes. Uh, Master Xiobo Chion, uh, the mountain is very strong. Uh, we 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 do not question the mountain. Interesting. Okay. All right. Uh huh huh how. How, how do I say this in like a colloquial way? 
Want to wrestle? The mountain, who's like in the middle of their like Donkey Kong pose, is going to stop and looks to you and they go, The mountain is unsure if he wishes to challenge this new contender. What value could they possibly add to the mountain's legacy? Oh, if you're scared, that's fine. And she'll walk back and go sit back down. As you say that and you walk away, he just goes, the mountain is over his legacy. The mountain's going to beat your ass in this bar. Ichi's just sitting there with her drink, just... So what are we drinking next, guys? <clears throat> uh, Alona pours Ichi in another glass. As you're, as you're pouring another glass, suddenly this chair is thrown and explodes into splinters as it crashes into the wall um, way behind you. Uh, and you see the mountain uh, holding two more chairs in one hand going, the mountain has two more warning shots. I'm calling you out. The mountain will have his day. Okay, so PJ, now remind me. Mm -hmm. Remind me about my chair that I have. <laughs> that you never used. Yes, that I've <laughs> never used before. The, the electrical chair? Is that what it is? Electrical? Yes. I couldn't remember exactly what it is. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to grab that out of wherever we carry that. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> oh, actually, I... uh, Sam, Sam, yeah. do, you, do you mind if uh, we say that Rufo is carrying it for you as any good manager should? And he pulls it out of his na happening uh, napper sack and just hands it to you? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rufa. No, no problem, uh, no problem. She's going to turn her, she's going to sit down her glass, grab the chair, turn around. You're like, oh, don't worry, I brought my own. Let's do this. So you have a chair in your hand. He has two, like, really nice sitting chairs. And then he goes, hmm, the mountain is starting to believe he has the wrong chair for this chair fight. Puts it down. Reaches into his back pocket, pulls out this little box, opens it up, and this massive folding chair, a lot like yours, comes out. He closes it, puts the box back in, slams that buddy down twice, and goes, the mountain is ready. Roll initiative. Um, real quick, Rufa's going to start taking bets from the crowd. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> All right, that is, that's a 16. And I can't find my chair notes, but uh, I trust you to remind me exactly how this chair works. Sure, sure. So when you use it in one hand, I believe it's 1d6 damage. When you use it in two hands, it's 1d8 damage. Yeah. I'm going to say you have a greater striking rune in that bad boy, so that would be two of each when you actually roll the hit. Uh, and it has 1d6 electric damage added to that. Once a day, you can unfold the chair, step on the seat, and then you turn into a lightning bolt to attack him. That's beautiful. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he rolled really high, so he's going to go first. He comes running over with this chair and just goes for a, just a crack on the dome on you. What's your AC? It is 19. 19. Okay. Well, uh, he almost critically fails. So he comes up and slams the chair against the ground. Everyone hears this really loud metallic uh, bling, like, like when a metal chair slams into concrete. Um, from there, he just proceeds to taunt you. And he goes... The mountain doesn't need a chair to kick your ass, but I prefer to have one so your ass that gets kicked has a place to sit. The mountain. It's really nice, actually. And then each you will go ahead and attempt to make a chair strike with two hands. All right, roll the hip. That is... Um, 
is my bonus like the same as my maul or something yeah like it's a weapon you're proficient with so yeah got it oh i feel like i had to use calculator in so long that is gonna be a 28 28 well yeah he's not wearing any armor right now so that's a, that's a dirty crit you yep She's not even gonna say anything. She's just gonna say, you know, what she said before. That's actually really nice of you. And just wham. <laughs> okay, so here's the things get really fun. Uh normally you're doing two d8s, so then now that's four. Well, okay, two d8 plus one d6 plus your strength modifier. Roll all that, double it. Two d8 plus one d6 plus my strength modifier. Strength modifier. That's eighteen points. Eighteen. Okay. So totally. So two d eight plus one d six plus strength mod is eighteen for you. Is eight plus four plus two plus four. Oh yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So you do, I believe, thirty six points. Oh, in this and case. then double it. Yeah, thirty six yeah. points. Oh, you crack him <laughs> on the head. <laughs> And this bolt of electricity kind of fires out of his skull where the, where the wound is and just kind of like recoils from it. He also has to make a fortitude save because of the shocking rune on there. He doesn't make it. And now he's uh, stunned. So, and he's just kind of like that. Uh, next, it's his round. Really quick, Ichi's going to, after that lands, Ichi's going to say, shocking, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the people in the bar are just like cheering you on. Uh, you start getting a plus one morale bonus to all your D20 rolls. Um, you just basically took the morale away from him. So on his turn, he stunned one. He loses one action. Coming two, he realizes that he's losing the crowd and he tries to swing at you in rage. You said it's 19, right? Yes. Okay, he will actually hit you this time. Where is it? There you go. Okay. Oh, wow. Max damage. Okay. So he is going to do uh, 21 damage as he cracks you back with it. And he turns to everyone else uh, in, the, ooh, in the bar and he tries to get them back on his side. And he says, the mountain fights for you, for the Imperial court. You can't be bothered to, to, uh, to love your champions, your mighty mountain champions. And they're like, it's like one guy, like grabbing a bottle and like thinking about hucking it at him. But he's like, no, no, the emperor will kill me. Uh. <laughs> Ichi, your turn. Ichi says, you know, normally the people of a community climb a mountain, but it looks like the mountains climbed you all. That's kind of, I don't like it. I'm gonna go try to hit him again. That's awesome. This one is 18 plus three, 16 plus 12, which is 28. That's, that's gonna be a dirty crit. Um, same thing, 2d8 plus, well, okay, 1d8. No, I was like 2d8 plus 1d6 plus strength. Double it again. I'm going to do it this time. 2d8, 1d6. EJ, can I, you, can I ask, how, so how's the betting going? <laughs> uh, <laughs> on this round, everyone is backing Ichi. So you're not going to make a lot of money, but at least you're going to get a return. All right. Money, I mean, as please. long as it makes some profit. Mm -hmm. That's uh, 32 points of damage. Jeez. Yeah. Um, you crack him on the dome. He drops to one knee. Uh, everyone give me a perception check. You brought an electrical chair to a chair fight. <laughs> oh, it's math. Math is hard. 22. No. 31. 31. Nice. 31. 31? Yes. Hell yeah. So, so uh, the mountain gets cracked again, and he just 
You see him grab his head and then just drop down unconscious. However, uh, Shionibus and Alona can tell he's faking it. He's just, he's like, this. he's like, ugh. Uh, and as, and as he's unconscious, he's just like, Bleh. you know, he drops his chair. He goes completely like limp and he's just sitting there, uh, uh being tired. Everyone in the bar is cheering. Um, you make from the betting, you make 81 gold. Actually, it's not too bad. Right. Um, and Rufa looking over this gentleman, you remember uh, hearing a handful of people refer to him as uh, Shiobul Chian. Let me make sure I get this right. Uh, Shiobul Chian. And he's talking about how he works at the Imperial Court, yada, yada, yada. And then you recognize a logo on his sash. He is Shiobul Chian, the third pillar of the Imperial Pillars, the mountain of the Emperor. Is he from rufa's time as a pillar or he was probably new ish when you came in because you don't remember some idiot named the mountain but you do recognize (laughs) that there was a dwarf that joined around the time before you retired okay okay rufa's gonna lean over to um alona and kind of whisper keep forgetting my mic is over there um (laughs) if Rufa is correct, uh, this one, if Rufa remembers correctly, is also one of the pillars. <gasps> A pillar man. Rufa, that's not good. He's also pretending to be unconscious. Do you think he's going to hit Ichi? <laughs> Rufa could tell he, Rufa passed that test, right? <laughs> Say, did, say that again. Did Rufa pass that that uh, test, perception test? I forgot. No, you could not tell that he was definitely oh. uh, faking his unconsciousness. But oh, no. but is Alona he, is he and uh, Chenovis did. Is he now? Mm, mm. Uh, Rufa's gonna look. Is gonna take. Gonna look for like a cup of water somewhere nearby. And uh, gonna. Pu- He's gonna just nonchalantly push, like kind of, kind of like pours the water towards uh, the mountain, and then go, gives uh, Itchy a look, and then looks at her electric chair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. no. Well, Itchy's busy like rallying up the crowd and cheering, so she probably doesn't notice this. She's just kind of like, um like standing around being like, yeah, Ichi, Ichi Pacta Pap- La Pacifica Dorita. Remember the name. There's a big buzz about me, right? Right? Because, you know, lightning. Yeah. She's like going over to whoever will give her a high five. And Oh, they're all giving you high fives. They're all giving you high fives like crazy. And they are giving you a local nickname, if I can figure out how to translate this really fast. But yeah, they're giving you a new nickname, and they are absolutely loving you. They call yeah. you, I'm um, probably going to butcher my apologies, but they call you uh, Feng Bao Shan, the Storm Mountain. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, Ichi's going to say, I've got one more thing for you. Finish off the show. And I think she's going to open up the chair and stand on it and then try to like do the lightning bolt, but without like hitting anything. Okay. (laughs) You can do it. If you go in the center, you can do it straight up. It's big enough that by the time the lightning bolt spell would end, you'd probably be at like the the highest, um, highest level of the tavern. Yeah. Yes, she will do that. She'll open it up. She'll like, don't forget my name. And then she'll stand on it and do the thing. Yeah. And as you shoot up, they're like, what? And they're like, Storm Mountain, Storm Mountain. And they're cheering you on. All while this is going on, there's Rufo just like, I'm going to pour some water on this guy. Maybe a little bit of electricity, like, you know, <laughs> leaks out. <gasps> 
Do you do you want to pour water on him, Michael? Yeah. <gasps> okay. Yeah. All right. What's what's your what's your perception DC? So good old the bonus to the roll plus ten. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see. Twenty one. <laughs> You pour the water on him. He doesn't seem to be moving. Maybe he really is unconscious. What the fuck? Pour it on his pants so it looks like he peed. <laughs> Fupa does that. Hold on. Such bad influences on Alona. <laughs> Right. Can, 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 can I roll? Um, oh God, usually you roll, okay. I think, deception for that if you want to do like a kind of like hidden action type of thing, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. What I'm doing is you're doing the action and he's lying to you. So oh. he's making deception checks against your perception. DC. Ah. That's what's happening right now, buddy. So, uh, yeah, you pour water on his pants. He's still not moving for some reason. His body is still there. He's not getting up. Maybe he's dead. All right, all right, all right. How about this? How about, um, I don't know if it would be intimidation, diplomacy, deception, probably deception. Um, Alona is gonna go, yeah, the bull, the mountain. <laughs> Shut up. Um, the mountain, look, he peed himself. Okay, make it make a deception check. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, here <your> point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, twenty six. So as you say that, he immediately pops up and goes, "The mountain never pisses his pants. The mountain <laughs> only pees once a month when the storms come through. For his piss is the piss of the mountain. How dare you!" And then he catches himself and he's like, "The mountain will leave now. It appears the mountain has overstayed their visit. Where's my shirt?" And then he just kind of starts stomping off, looking for his clothes. Ichi like had finished her lightning bolt and landed back on the chair just in time to like see this, and she just kind of looks at him and watches him watch uh, watches him walk away, and then just kind of like steps off the chair, like holds it up. Well, that was fun. Weird guy. Um, I wanted to point out in the chat. Um, Mahooch asked, "Is that what passes for Mountain Dew and shit?" <laughs> Damn it, Mahooch, you get a hero point. That's so good. I have to reward that. That's that's a point. Um Ding. Okay, so uh the third pillar of the uh Shin Imperial Court has been embarrassed to the point where they leave. Yay. You have survived the mountain of the emperor but he's technically still alive. So maybe he'll come back in this investigation. Who knows? Meanwhile, the ruckus is getting so bad that you hear this door, like the sliding door open and this voice just start booming. Hey, some people are trying to work. This, this is where I do my business. Could you please keep it down? Thank you. I mean, that mountain guy pipe just up. left. Was, was that, was that Kelly? Off. Piss off. Kind of is gonna pipe up and say piss off as she's picking splinters of wood from the chairs out of her drink. Okay. Mm. Mm. Nope, that'll just be, yeah, okay. So you hear a, a pause. What was that? Comes from like three stories up. She's just going to stay quiet. She's not even going to repeat herself. Okay, Shumas, your choice. Give me intimidation, deception, or diplomacy. Uh, deception, intimidation, or diplomacy? Mm-hmm. What is that? 
I'm doing diplomacy, by the way. Okay. Let's use a hero point. I feel like it could be better. And in fact, can be. Um, that's a. That can't be right. Hold on. 29. 29. So as you, as you say nothing and you just calmly pull the debris and detritus out of your drink, it takes a few minutes, but eventually you see standing in front of you a very tall, surprisingly young Chinese warrior. If you need to, think, uh, think the love interest from Mulan. <gasps> yeah, that guy. Think this guy. Um, you know, he's got kind of high waisted pants with a sash. Uh, he's got a uh, kind of a, a jacket on a, a long green coat with a beautiful, uh, hand stitched golden, uh, picture of a horse and his hair is up in a bun. Uh, and it's got this beautiful gold pin in it. Uh, and he looks down very sternly with his hands on his, his fists on his hips. And he goes, my apologies. I lost my temper. You are clearly guests of this establishment. I did not mean to overstep. That was wrong of me. My name is Ma Shu. I am the horse general of the emperor. And um, if there's anything I need to do to make amends, let me know. If there's any bills that need to be paid, it's on the, uh, it's on the emperor's pockets. Um... Please sit, sit with us, have a drink. I probably should. I've been working for weeks straight. Thank you so much for your courtesy. And he sits down, kind of flips his coat back and stand and sits down. Very military, very stern and stoic. And he looks to you. Hi. She's going to look at Rufa and just... Rufa's gonna look at uh, Alona. So uh, it seems that uh, we have found the gentleman in question. Yes. Hello. How was work? So far, it's very hard to have any advantage defending this city if we are attacked in any direction. We are in a kill box, so it's not going easy. We would know a thing or two about that. We did save the world after all. What, how did you save the world? Oh, oh, you don't know? I mean, there's a play going around about it. Um, I don't well, get out for theater. That's a darn shame. Don't worry, you might soon. Um, <sighs> Uh, well, you know, what had happened was um, there were a, a bunch of um, tribes of, um, um, of orcs that were banding together to, you know, need to, to, to take over the world. And they were being led by a green king who's a important figure that was lost to history. And he was coming forward with his worm kin and then kind of brainwashing orcs into trying to kill lots of people. And there were goblins involved, too. And. You know, there was a big war on the Adelphon continent, and we were in charge of leading um, the uh, tip of the spear, as you would call it, and um, eventually led to the defeat of the big baddie himself, uh, the Green King. And yeah, that's, uh, we, we did that. Wait, was this that war that Shin had to come and bail you all out of quite recently? If I recall, I was... I was there with the young girl general and Kong Ming. I remember, yes, this was that day. Great to yes. see you again. It's been a while. Of course. Good to see you too. Glad the horse motif is going well. Um, well, if you needed any help, um, I'm sure that we could um, take a look since we've been through a thing or two. Maybe a fresh perspective would help. Um, we would be willing to do so in exchange for some information about something we've heard about that sounds kind of cool. Mm. Well, I am, I am always happy for the help, but I, I am no fool. What information do you wish to know? Oh, 
oh, we were just, it came to our attention about, uh, if you know anything about uh, a tiger, uh, uh, other than the, the, the one with the, the, of the pillar, um, we were informed that uh, there is some a situation with some sort of tiger type thing. Nope, sorry. I can honestly say I don't know anything about a tiger pillar. I don't know anything about that. Thank you very much for your time. I must go back to work. That uh, seems like the wrong way that conversation goes. Wait, wait, hold, please. I have a proposition. We can make this fun since you seem like you're stressed and need a break. Why don't we engage in some horse play? You have a horse with you? What horse is it? I would love to see the horse. I don't have a horse with me. However, I did beat this large gentleman over here in a horse race. You Hello. could say I am a very talented horse person. Give me a diplomacy check. Okay. With plus two. Ah, yes. It's because I'm cute. All right. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I want this to work so bad. Ah, I don't have another hero point. Do I? Did I get one this game? I didn't, did I? I just the one you start with, to my knowledge. That is gutter trash. Um, my diplomacy check uh, was a 14. 14. So Mashu uh, looks to you and he says, I am sorry. Oh, wait. No, I lied. Mahooch oh. said to take his. He got it. He, he's already wait. giving it up. Can't, can, actually, before that happens, is it okay if I aid? Uh, let's let her do the reroll okay. first. We'll go to the aid. So yeah, do the reroll first and see where that goes. Thank you, Mahooch. I get his axe and his hero point. Um, that's way better. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, thank you. What was the wait? What was the what was the modifier again? It's ten, right? It's ten because it's diplomacy. So for me, that's a twenty-six. <laughs> nice. Okay. So. Uh, you say that you beat Morel, and he looks to Morel, and he goes, "Is this true? Did she beat you?" Uh, yeah, she uh, told me. Oh, it doesn't matter what she told me, but she she's a very good horse rider, and I'm I'm, I'm a knight of Acadia. I used to be. Hmm. You beat an officer of Acadia on horseback. You have my attention. Get a horse of your choosing. We'll meet in two hours. Tops. Midnight ride. We go against the setting moon. First person to reach the farmland to the south wins. And by the way, bring a weapon. Or a shield. Or both. You'll need it. Good sport, everyone. I'll see you soon. And he kind of just like, like runs away all full of excitement. Damn it. It worked too well. Uh, Alona looks at Rufa. Okay, where can we get a horse? Well, usually one would find a horse from a horse breeder or at the stables. Does it have to be a big horse? Because if we just, you know, you were cheering really loud for me, in the performance that I just did and the beat down that I did. So you might be a, a little horse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hero Each point. Like, that was so cringe. I gotta give you a hero point. Each is like, I'm I'm gonna leave. All right. Listen, I wanna make the case that I made a horse play joke and I didn't get a hero point. <laughs> so like, um, listen, we need to up our uh, pun game standards as well just saying i'm just i'm just saying next time i make a horse pun um ichi <laughs> back me up here um we don't have, anyway uh, oh, sorry. no go ahead go ahead michael well, i was gonna say too bad we don't have woodward here we could have him, him turn to a horse oh 
I could have written Woodward's. I mean, with his with his consent, yeah, he can animal shape. He could he could have done that. Damn, I'm gonna tell Aiden later. Um, anyway, so we are gonna go find a horse if that's okay with people, or I can go by myself. That's probably a bad idea. Don't let Alona go by herself. I'll go with you. Rufa Ruf- okay. will go with you too, as oh God, what's the word? Um, to bargain for a horse. Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. I want you to give me either a survival check, a uh, society check, or a nature check. Nature check. Here we go. Can you not do three with your one hand? I don't. I, oh, I can't. I got, oh. these, I got these, these bear claw sausage fingers. Anyway. It's okay. Okay, so god damn it. Um for society, I got a 29. Okay, 29. I okay. got a natural 20. Natural 20. Natural 20. Out of curiosity, what was that yeah, rule for? Is that survival, society, or nature? I didn't even choose before I rolled, so now I'm going to. to do survival yeah okay mm-hmm. okay um i'm gonna play with that because i got a really fun idea so you're looking around you're trying to find a horse stable this late at night that'll let you rent a horse everyone says come back in the morning come back in the morning we've stabled all the horses we don't want to deal with money until it's actual business hours the horses have to sleep we're not going to do anything with that as you continue to look around you, you, Sam, you see this old man out in the woods, this old, bald, hunched over man going, Hey, you said you're looking for a horse, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I, have, I have the best horse for you. Would you like a horse? Yeah. Uh, I'll, guys, I'll be right back. This uh, old man at the edge of the woods uh, is going to show me a horse. Yeah, no, just, Do you know? <laughs> Come on. No, no, just you, just you and me. If you bring your friends, I, I only have one horse. I can't give one for everyone. She goes off running. You may follow her no. or not. Up to you. <laughs> no, Alona chases after Ichi. Ichi, no! This is some face shit. Ichi, no! So as you as you go like with this old man, uh, he, he just starts kind of walking with you. He's like, oh, it's so good to meet youngsters. You're so big and strong. Hey, can I ask you for a favor? Yeah, of course. Can, can you can you please open this gourd? I, I'm too old to open it up. No, oh, don't just open like old man's crack gourd. it open. Like yeah, no, 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 no. Just, just take the top off of it. Okay. Hey. Oh, thank you. He drinks it. You know, pours it on his head and just kind of wipes around. Goes, oh, it's been such a hot day. Hey, can you do me another favor? I mean, sure. We need a horse, so great. Yeah, whatever. Um, there there is this really big rock that it it's it's in my way and i'd like to just move it could you please help me move this rock i know it's out of the way but could you please try i'm really good at picking things up so yeah oh great she goes over and she lifts the rock you're so strong that's amazing oh okay all right, just one more favor to ask of you, and then this may be a little silly, but please indulge an old man. Of course. Right. And then he 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 brings out uh, a knife and he hands it to him. He's like, "Can you cut off my head?" What? Cut off my head clean. I just no pain. Just make it go off in one. Uh. Well. Okay. Um. Oh, I just, I have a really bad headache, and it would just, it would just be so nice of you. Uh, so I, I don't know what, like, the legal system, how it works here, but I'm gonna generally assume that, um, the value of the life of an old man is approximately the same across nations. So, uh, can I get you, like, some booze instead? That should help. 
no, no, no. I already had what was in my gourd. I don't need that anymore. Just please, just, just right in the back of my noggin. Just, just take me out. It'll be great. Don't worry. I'll get you your horse. Uh, you know, I, I can't do that, but I could crack your back. Like, you know, like, like in like a healthful way, you know, just right there. It should put everything back into place, I think. Oh, that would be great. No, unfortunately, I just need you to, to you know, do, do, do the thing you said you do and help an old man out. And, and don't worry. He takes your hand gently, you know, putting the knife down. Don't worry. I'm going to be okay. I just need you to give me a little whack right on the back of the head with this knife. It's not going to kill me. You mean with the pointy end? Just... Yep, clean through. <laughs> Uh, give, give me a, just give me just a quick moment. Of course. Don't go Ichi, too far. That's my good knife. Ichi steps away and like tries to think. She like checks her pockets. She pulls out the duct tape of superior mending and she looks at it. She's like, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, hmm. She's going to try to like get in touch with the ancestors. <laughs> She's just gonna stand behind a tree and be like, uh, Abuela, are you around? I know we're like really far away, but you're incorporeal, so maybe it doesn't matter. You around? Eventually, as you as you silence your mind and and kind of slip your your consciousness in between the realm of the living and the dead, uh you know, kind of in that shadowy curtain between here and, and Zababa, you eventually do see your grandmother coming out of the mist. And she says, hey, Mika, how are you doing? It's good, so, good, so good to see you. Hey, we should really, I should really call you more often. Um, not when I need something, just for fun, but I do need something. Is this like a spirit dude or what? Like he wants me to chop his head off. That's not normal for an old man, right? Well, it might be some, 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 some old people. Ooh, yeah, they have some issues, but no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting some feeling that this is not a normal old man. Grandma, should I chop off this man's head? What chop off his head? This is what he's asking me. Did you, did you agree to chop, Mija? Did you agree to cut chop off his head? Not yet. Is he asking you politely? Yeah, he's asking you really That uh, sounds politely. like some spirit shit. I don't know. I would do sounds to be like safe. I don't know. Like, you're right. I can't, like, I can't disrespect. That's what I thought. It feels like some spirit shit, and I can't, if they want something from me, I have, I can't mess around. I have to, you know. Okay. So if this goes badly, I asked you, okay? If anyone asks, well, you, they can't see you, so I don't know. Well, I guess I'll just live in a forest. Okay. Bye. All right, so so you you do it. You chop this man's head off. Well, I walk over first, and I say, um, how long have you been living in this forest here, my dude? Oh, that's a very good question. I, I think I've been living in this forest some, I want to say, all my life. 100, maybe 200 years, hard to say. Yeah, just like you, yourself, you and yourself and some friends. Oh, it, me, me and, 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 and the horse. Well, he's not here right now, but oh, he'll come running, I guarantee you. He'll come running, okay. Uh, and I, so once, you know, I take care of this for you, you know, a little favor, you, I just, Put it back on. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. It's a head. It's supposed to go back on the neck. Okay. All right. Okay. This is what you want. This is what you yeah. want. Oh yeah, you you were so nice. You did everything I asked so far. You showed a lot of respect to an old man. Now I just need you to give me the old twelve to six, right, right to right to the neck. All right. That's what he wants. Uh, each takes the duct tape out again. 
she sets it on the ground. <laughs> and she's like, uh, you ready? Oh, yeah. And he bends over, kind of like pulls his, his, uh, his shirt back. So he sees Nick. Oh, yeah. Get, get it right here. I'm ready. Ichi. Ichi does it, I guess. <laughs> sure. And you you just feel all horrible feelings and thwack, head pops right off. Looking for the unfortunate gore and blood of a decapitation, you find nothing. The body what? just falls down and the head just rolls up and goes, oh, now I feel so much better. Thank you so much. I have a terrible headache. Come here, you big dummy. Come pick me up. I'm on the ground. I need you. And as he's saying this, you hear this whinnying coming from the sky. And then the man puts his head back on backwards. And he goes, oh, yep, there's the horse, I promise. There he is. Look at him coming now. Here it comes now. And so this bright gold light just starts to illuminate the night sky out in this forest. And he points and he goes, this here horse. And they turns his head around. Now oh, it's better. This here horse isn't just any normal horse. You'd probably assume because it's glowing and it's gold and it's flying. But, and then suddenly his body changes into a tall, long, powerful man wearing uh, green jade robes, a long beard and his hair up in a, in a gold and green hat. And he says, this is my favorite horse. This Longma, the divine dragon horse of heaven. I figured you needed a horse. You helped an old man with a difficult task. And I sense in you and your friends and Rufa great heroes. I don't know where your journey will lead you, but you've done my tasks. So please borrow my horse for one night. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ichi bends down, picks up the duct tape. And the he looks fine. She's going to put it away. She's <laughs> going to take the horse leads. And then just, she's going to take the horse leads and just turn around. Mm. Oh, and there's one thing you must never do if you're going to ride this horse. Don't look behind you. He hates that. Keep your head focused straight ahead. Got it. Okay. Uh -huh. Great. Great. Uh, take, take it easy. Enjoy, you know, your evening. Oh, no of headache. course. Oh, and, it's, uh, it's so much better now, thanks to you. It really is. See you later. And it's just going to walk, leading the horse out. And I think that you guys see her, like, like, walking out of the forest, leading this glorious horse with just, like, this look on her face of blankness. Uh Oh, Fred Ichi, you found the horse. Yeah, here's the horse. What? Why do you look like that? Uh, it's a long story. Uh, anyway, um, Alona, Alona, she takes the the reins and just puts it in Alona's hands. Alona, um, when you ride this horse, just don't look behind you. Like she grabs Alona's face. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look behind you. Okay? All right. So this giant green and gold scaled horse seems to have the scales of a dragon and massive wings, golden light coming out of it. Uh, it's got a snout just like a, a, a horse would, but you see like the kind of like the long whisper, whisper, whiskers of dragons as you mount up it kind of gets a little weird it doesn't quite like it but it settles down and as you're on it it kind of trots over to rufa headbutts him a little bit like poof, yeah you you rubs his like kind of nuzzles you a bit licks your face messes your hair up and then oh my oh my oh my uh rufa's gonna kind of pet the horse's Oh God, I don't even know what it's called. The front mane on the head part mm -hmm, with yeah. this uh, hand that has the symbol on it. Absolutely. 
uh, as you do that, it, it kind of like looks like it has this reaction to the symbol and then looks at you and then poof, pops its head right back in your hand and this that's a good pussy and then he's gonna lean over to Alona and kind of goes weird things very very weird things Uh, the horse is still glowing (laughs) bright and gold like the morning sun so exciting um okay Ah, uh, wow, this is great. Um, uh, like, this is like out. normal things in Shin, right? <laughs> you, so yes and no. Is this normal? Mm, it's it's plausible. But you know, Rufa, very well that this Longma is absolutely the celestial dragon horse of the Jade Imperial Court of Heaven. And while sometimes it makes appearances, it's usually to mark like an amazing, powerful hero who will lead the way for like the country in the future. And it keeps patting you with its giant diamond head. Rufa's gonna look at the horse and just like kind of whispers to the horse now. Do not have such high, high, uh, do not have such high expectations for Rufa. It will only build up Rufa's anxieties. (laughs) It butts you directly in the chest. Like. That's so cute. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Where did they say that we were meeting for this um, for this race? That's a good question. Technically, I don't think I gave that information, but you do see, uh, you first of all, you hear a noise and it sounds like a horse's neigh or whinny, but as it neighs and whinnies, you can hear the sound of a thousand other horses almost happening cacophonously at once. And you see Mashu in his gold and green armor coming out with this long spear in one hand, the reins in the other, and he's coming out on uh, Lingma. And as Lingma's hooves click the ground, you see fire sparking from every step. The mane itself just looks like it's made of living fire. As he's coming out on the horse and then kind of does a little kick with his hooves, the horse actually takes off the ground a few feet and starts to slowly turn into a fireball. And he looks at you and he says, that is a good horse. Are you ready? Yeah. And we're going to take our five-minute break. When we come back, the horse race, Longma versus Liangma. Mashu versus Ilona. Who's going to win in this battle of quite literally legendary horses in a horse race? We'll find out in five minutes. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon, everybody. See you in five. There we go. I can hear it now. There we go. So sorry. Thank you for the playback. Uh, and we are back from our break. Uh, Kylie had some uh, some things to attend to, uh, so she had to leave at the break. So we hope that her night goes well and that she's doing a okay. Uh, but in the meantime, let's get to this super horse race. So, super saiyan horse race. Super saiyan. I mean, you're not entirely wrong. Uh, but that being said, now, so, so Mashu kind of starts flying on this horse. And as he does, Sydney, the horse that you're on just kind of like. <sighs> And then the wings start to like start flapping and you start to rise on basically rise into the air and you start feeling the hooves move in midair like it's riding on the ground. It's just <laughs> what? Alone is on a magical horse. And that's like in every fantasy book ever. And she's really happy right now. <laughs> that is all. She's freaking out because she read in a book about flying horses and now she feels like a princess and she's very excited. Even even more excited than uh, Tesla, your, your magical bat? Okay, they're on equal footing. <laughs> Fair enough. So... This horse literally just starts flying and its hooves are just like running on midair. And even though Lingma is just, Ling, sorry, Lingma is just rocketing off, this horse sidles up beside it. 
and don't look you back, s- don't look back alona <laughs> alona goes what just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so mushu watches you and nods approvingly and he goes okay just about outside the city limits when i say go i'll bring my spear up when it comes down we ride as fast as we can first one to the country village as the moon is setting wins you ready if i can yes if i can beat one beefy boy i can beat you too let's go he extends his spear with a nice thrust he raises up high he goes new mark get set go and (laughs) it's like the delorean hitting 88 miles an hour your head knocks back as the long march just makes this dragon roar screech and starts taking off you hear uh, Liang Ma next to you just like scream this this horse roar and fire ignites behind him like a rocket. Now we are in a race. So what I need you to do, uh-huh. I'm gonna make four quick obstacles. The DC to beat is relative to your level. It will be harder at every step. So it starts off at 20 and then it's gonna be going 22, 25, We'll see where it goes from there. But you are in a race, neck to neck. First things first, uh, you see Mashu looking at you, impressed with you in this horse. He recognizes the horse, and he smiles at you, nods his head, and then dives the horse down into the, into the field. And you see him just kind of burrowing into the ground. And then... You look and you see this massive stone cropping in the middle of the field covered in fulus and charms. I need a check. Any check you feel is appropriate to not crash into this holy rock. Uh, is this how Alona dies? Playing Super Mario Kart? It might be. <laughs> Her information? <laughs> no. Um. Oh, no. I did I die? Didn't get a hero point for my horse joke, and now I'm gonna die, PJ. This is <laughs> on you. Um, okay. Uh, what was the check again? It was a DC 20. Oh no, don't meet that. Oh, for sure, do not. A uh, DC 20. Wait, with what? With what skill? With what? Uh, your choice. Uh, you can either do an acrobatics check or a nature check to handle the animal. Choice is yours. No, Shemp is giving me their hero point because they want me to win. Thanks, Shemp. Ha! Survived my chat again. Thank you for keep making puns. It saves my life. Um... Was that... What was this? Today I might have to make a new shirt that says Saved by Chat. Mm-hmm. Honestly? Saved by the chat, and it's in the font of, like, yes. Saved by the Bell. Mm-hmm. Can, we, can we say I didn't use... I feel, I feel very bad. Um, I rolled the same number again. I rolled a four. Okay. Twice. You know what? I'm sorry, um, Shem. Can, 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 can. <laughs> Sydney, I'll give you my hero point. <laughs> what? I mean, okay, if I, if to... I get a four, I'm going to be so mad. Well, I will normally, scream. I want to say norm- my mic normally I don't allow this, but I get that you can't all work together, so I'll let it happen. Listen. This Mm -hmm. is about not death. This is about horses and every horse girl's dream. And friendship. And, oh, is this My Little Pony now? Crap. Oh, my God! Oh, my God. Did you get a four again? again? Can we just add up the fours now at this point? Is it? What is it? What is it? I can't see it. Is it a 20 or a one? That one. It's a no, net one. Take oh, oh, my no. hero point. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, she's oh, got to do this three okay. more times. Let's not get All carried right. away. All so right. you definitely fail the first obstacle. As you're coming into line, the long ma dragon that you're on looks at this rock incoming, kind of like raises its head up to you like anything, and you're having that kind of analysis paralysis. And the horse just goes, <sighs> headbutts the rock and just moves right through it like a bullet however because you critically failed 
Liang Ma being ridden by Ma Shu gets a massive lead. You're seeing them just right in front of you. And he's turning back and he's looking at you going, kind of like waving a spear around. He goes, I thought that you rode the celestial dragon horse. I thought that meant you could ride it. My apologies. And then just kind of keeps flying off, goading you to try to outride them. That being said, as you start to get closer and closer to him, the second obstacle appears. A dense forest breaks out in front of you, and now it's a matter of constant agility. He is just dip diving and weaving through these branches like an F-16 Tomcat going through hell and back. I need you to make whatever role you want to do to survive. The DC will still be a 20. Okay. You can dip, dodge, dip, dodge, dive, and dash, and what is it? I don't know the quote from that movie. I just remember that oh, it's something uh, with all of those words, right? The five, the five D's of celestial horse riding. Uh, dodge, dip, dive, uh, something, and dodge. Some, someone, in, someone in chat, help us out, please. Yeah, please save someone us from our own videos. idiocy here. Uh, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a religion check to okay. pray <laughs> okay. to pray that i make it through this freaking forest because for the love of all that is holy mm. it's a 22 okay so <laughs> so as you start praying you suddenly hear his voice from the horse going <sighs> It's very clear to me now, <laughs> nay, that the person who is supposed to be riding me is not you. However, I shall see to it that no terrible harm come to you. May the Jade Court watch over you and close your eyes. It's about to get hectic. And then you just see this celestial dragon horse just dipped. Like you're like doing barrel rolls through tree branches. It's bananas. You make it through. And as this happens, you come out of the forest and you're now neck and neck with Marshall. I love Marshall. that this horse just acknowledged that Alona is a very poor stand-in for Rufa. <laughs> <laughs> so the horse starts to gain, uh, kind of start going neck and neck. And then Mashu looks to you and he shouts, hey, great job. Did you bring a weapon? Does spiritual guardian count? <laughs> he looks at you and goes, nope. And then he starts just swinging his spear at you. <laughs> I have of my... Ah! I have my boot! You do. You have the boot. Now, I will say this. No one put the returning rune in the boot yet. If you throw it and it hits or misses, it's gone. Not my boot. I mean, Not my you, brand new shiny you boot. You also still technically have your bracers, your hand wraps, I mean. How am I going to punch this man in the sky? I mean, grab the thing spear and pull him off the horse all right all right this is what we're doing this is this is what this is the this is what's gonna happen we're gonna do this okay elona is going to fly close enough to this horse that she can she can kick this man with her boots because she's got the boots on the that were made for boots? walking the slam dance boots. She's got the slam dance boots. And I believe in Alona's ability to yeet and kick this man square in the jaw. Kick. Okay. All right. Roll to hit. I will give <gasps> it's a nat 20! Hey! That's amazing. Okay, you know what? Uh, okay, no, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to impose penalties for later so you come you come flying by on the long ma and as he comes seeing he sees you come by and he gets his spear and he starts like thrusting and striking and doing sweeps and you can tell that he is a honed general of like 
thousands of cavalry battles and and you're trying to dodge them and then you just get your boot you click it against the side of the horse these giant ghost uh uh wheels come out and you kick him in the dome and he just poof and the whole whole horse just goes flying very far off to the left you see his giant craters somewhere in the countryside as he just comets to the ground not only did you critically succeed this round he critically failed this round now the irony of this is that you are both tied not just in successes but failures so He's going to be at a really massive penalty for this next uh, thing. This is the very last one. You start flying. You see the moon slowly starting to kind of set, uh, settle on the horizon to your right. It's kind of nice. It's massive. This massive pale moon. You can even see some like jade and green colors inside of the moon itself. You see different animals, uh, kind of constellations in the stars and different shadows that look like animals. It's very lovely. And then you look directly ahead of you, and there lies a small village. You're ganging on it. This has got to be the one. Suddenly, like Han Solo from Star Wars, a, a, a blast of fire moves over your shoulder as Yang Ma kind of comes back into the race. He's behind, and Ma Shu looks kind of confused and disoriented from, you know, being a crater person for a bit. But he <laughs> comes flying by, and the last obstacle comes into play uh he shouts very loudly he says guard dog suddenly you hear the roar of a lion as this massive dog with a lion's head just goes <laughs> and he's like you have a holy uh animal i have a holy animal hope you don't mind i figured it'd be interesting and suddenly, this massive lion guard dogs just in the middle of the field is and starts to sweep at you and breathing holy fire all over you. I need a check to survive this last obstacle. Okay. Okay. My first initial thought is kick him again, only so I can say, like Bartok did in uh, Anastasia. And then I kick her, sir. Um, but I, I can't do that clearly. So I'm going to roll and hope for the not, the not good, not good, not really good. bad, really bad, not good time, really not good, bad time, bad time for everyone. Um, mm, Effie Burton says, take his hero point. I am living my best life. I feel very loved and seen and appreciated. Thank you. Can I have it? PJ? Yes, yes, you may. Wait till you roll to say you're living your best life, Alona. <laughs> Good advice from Sam. Absolutely. All right. I'm knocking on my wooden desk, particle board desk. Same thing. Believe in myself, believe in the craft, believe in Alona, believe in friendship, and it's way better. Ha! Huh? All right. Let's do this. Um, let's see. Well, I rolled really well, so I can use any skill I want. Um, that was bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Um, well, there's fire and there's, um, you know, if I really just want to, if I really just want to just knock these, you said they're celestial. Mm -hmm. Oh, then I can use religion, right? Absolutely. Haha. <laughs> well um in that case my religion check is redonkulous and what i do is with that 30 i'm going to actually um summon light from afra and blind these lion dogs so that they're too um, blown away by this like illuminated backlit woman riding a celestial horse mm -hmm. that they run away so you make this bright display of light and the dog lion looks at it and goes 
because it's a celestial creature so it sees the holy light and it just kind of almost like a toddler just kind of zones out for a bit trying to grab the light at this point you have zoomed right by it and so has Mashul. and he looks at you and he's like i i can't believe you've how did you you pull in it's like a hair difference as you land with like a like a skid like earth keeps like like kicking up as the horse's hooves just go into the dirt and mashu is just basically in like two inches off your right shoulder and he looks to you and he goes huh i you you fascinated the guardian dog there's something righteous about you I mean, we could argue that it was almost a tie, but I think that would be a waste of my time. More you know, yes? I couldn't do it without the help of my friends. And Alona proceeds to give an Oxford speech. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, no, I won. Um, but the light that illuminated me didn't come from me. It came from my God because I need to win, because I need that information out of you, because what's happening is way bigger than you or me. I lied when I, say that when I said back at the tavern about not having anything that I could say, I don't remember anything. Um, my job as always has been to protect this kingdom. And knowing that Rufa has been chosen by this horse and this horse is letting you ride them, but the celestial dog, the lion dog, recognizes you and I wouldn't hesitate to guess would recognize Rufa and the other friends as well. I can trust you with this. I was sent by the emperor to go to a small village to look for the tiger that would possibly dethrone them. I was there for about a week. They were very hospitable. While there, I had to engage in combat in some manner or form with three individuals of interest. One, a young man who had just returned from his education in Adelphon Prime. I believe he goes by the name of Chen Jen. Great student, strong rebellious spirit, great fighter. Could easily lead a rebellion if he wanted to. I met a very wise old man, a retired strategist, now painter. He goes by the name of Weiwei, but that's not his original title. He was very smart, very powerful. He was hard to fight, but it wasn't him. And then there was a teacher just a school teacher. She was a very powerful opponent. My official report is that I went there. I found people of interest. However, my investigation was non-conclusive. I think any one of those three people could very well be the thing that overthrows the emperor. And as much as it pains me to admit this, I want that to happen. That's a very brave thing that you said. Why? I've always believed in my country. I have always shown filial piety to my family, my father, my emperor. My emperor betrayed my father. We relied upon him for reinforcements and when we were met with roaming warlords, they never came. We were overwhelmed. My father was killed in that battle. Those were many, many or good horses too. The emperor said that the loss of such fine beasts and equestrians was a tragedy, but he never mentioned my father. The warlord he trusted to protect that land of Liang. I don't like vengeance, but I did swear upon that day. 
I will have revenge against the emperor who let my father die cold and alone in the land of Liang. I'm sorry about your father. He was a good man. He never saw horses as tools of war. He saw them as family. And I respect him and honor him every day. Yes, you do. Um, Ilona walks up to him and with the touch of her finger touches his palm and a um, symbol of Afra glows on it. You're very special. And um, I can tell that you care. And that's really important. And it's hard to do. And um, you're in a difficult situation right now. So if you ever need anything, just let me know. Thank you. As the horse general of the West, I will be fine, but I appreciate you. In the meantime, we should go back. We are at least a few miles journey away from where we last were. We were going pretty fast. I'm sorry, what, where, huh? Where are we, huh? This village is at least by normal horse standards about a day's ride south. We have to go back. Can, can I say back, back at the beginning, we was just gonna look at it, she goes, uh, you think they're coming back? Um, well, I, you know, there's been a lot of things that have shaken my reality today, so I'm not going to make a judgment call on that right now. Thank you. Ha, 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 you know what? Let's go get the, um, some um, almond tofu. Um, a little to snack. Yeah, Hopefully snack. they'll be back by, by, by then. Right. So you finally find a late night almond tofu stand, among other things as well. But this is one of their many uh, delicacies and snacks. After a few exchange of coins, uh, they give you these fresh made desserts uh, and a little utensil to enjoy them with. It's delectable. It's, oh, it's so soft, but so sweet. Not too sweet, just right. Hits the palate. You, it's the kind of sweetness that fills jiggly. your entire mouth. It's very jiggly. Oh, it's, it's that kind. Of, it's fun to eat and it's fun to play with. And as, and as you're just there enjoying it, suddenly this giant rush of energy and wind. And then all of a sudden you're just, <laughs> as like two horses just kind of land out of the sky in the dirt. And, and, and you just see Ma shoot us. <laughs> Rufa offers um, almond tofu to Alona, Alona him and then to their steeds. <laughs> Horses eat almonds? Can they? I don't know. Well, magic horses? They're magic, magic horses. Magic horses can eat anything, all right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. they can eat nuts. I think they can eat nuts. I think so. And yeah. magic jet. horse isn't going to die from a nutrient deficiency, so. I'm pretty yeah. I know they can eat soy. I know they can eat soy. Okay. Right. Anyone in the chat, if you know that horses can or cannot eat almonds, please confirm, magical or not. I want to know. Uh, so, yeah, they. let's assume for right now, they can because they're magical god horses and they're having a delectable time with these uh treats. Mashu looks at Rufa and he he says, Rufa, a couple of miles journey south southeast of this village, you will find a smaller farming village called Kuja. There you will find three people. I've already told Alona about them, but for you, I will repeat myself. There is a Young man, fresh from his education across the Great Divide in Anulfon Prime. He's very smart. He's very passionate. He's very stubborn. He goes by the name of Chen Zhen. You will know him, and he may challenge you to a fight. It is his way. Rufa nods, and as he's eating the tofu, okay. Good. Good. That there's more. there's more. Look, I said, is that, oh, okay, more. Okay. There's more. There's okay. more. You also find a wise old man, long retired from the military. When he was a strategist, we referred to him as Jongda. 
Now he goes by the name of Weiwei. He is an artist. He is crafty. Be wary of him, but be respectful. Lastly, there is a teacher, a very sweet teacher. Be very careful of her. Her name is Wu Guingin. Somewhere in that village, between one or all of those people, the tiger that will kill the emperor lives there. I know this. And I have lied to the emperor about this fact. So you must tell no one of this. Rufa kind of looks over at uh, his compatriots, uh, Alona and Inchi, and nods. Okay, okay. If you had to put money on it, who, who do you think is the one of the three? Usually you put money on things for me. So I'm having a hard time with this question. Rufa, Rufa actually just stops and eats, <laughs> stops eating the, the, to the almond tofu and actually just contemplates what Itchy says. That is, that is very, very true. And, but then he looks back at the journal and goes, but, but still, still, if you, had to wager a guess among those three. Hmm. What are the options again? Zheng Zheng, the student from abroad, who has become a tremendous boxer and brilliant student. Zhong Da, AKA Wei Wei, a wonderful wonderful artist and someone who has said that they have already seen the fall of the emperor in their dreams and lastly wu guiying the teacher she is very gentle very sweet to the children i don't think i can pull one over the other as being the tiger i see great potential in all of them and beating them in combat was not easy if i'm being honest i lost to all three Sometimes fate can be a funny thing. Sometimes the answer is not so close. It could quite possibly be all three. Mm. It could possibly be one. It could. It or could possibly be none of them. Hmm. Well, it could also just be really bad at fighting and we just are being real nice. <laughs> Jongda, Jongda said I won, but I could tell from his demeanor that I had lost. And I could tell in my heart that I had lost. Cheng Cheng, well, I won, but I lost. I lost the people. He fights for the farmers. He fights for the small villages. He fights for the little the little person. Wu Gu Ying, I won, but I lost my own self respect. So, be careful. They're dangerous. They're powerful. And any one of them could be the person that kills the dragon. Are we going to go talk to all of them, or we're only choosing one to talk to? Investigation is not mine. They all live in the same village of Hujia. If you go there, I'm sure they'd all be more than happy to talk to you. It's a very hospitable village. Now, excuse me, I have to restable my horse, and I have to go to bed. I have to wake up at sunup to continue my inspections. Thank you. And Alona. He reaches and he pulls out a, uh, uh, basically it's like a, like a, like a little golden whittled statue of a horse from the province of Liang. And he says, this is a horse totem, a horse fetish, effigy. This is a good luck charm that we give to horse riders so that they may never get off their saddle. Because if a horseman falls off their horse, they are dead. So please take this as my thanks for challenging me. Good night, everyone. Be safe. The, uh, the horse token uh, basically confers a plus two item bonus to uh, checks made to ride a horse, uh, as well as horseback races. So everything you do in those horseback races, you have a plus two from this item.
Aha, Morel will never win again. No, I'm never winning another horse race. Is that what you begin with? No, I didn't. Look behind the curtain. I asked PJ how to spell the names of uh, the three people. I'm just, I, I'm also wondering, um, is did you write the names as in like family name and then first name or? Oh, good question. Um, yes, okay. I did it in family name. However, Jongda is a nickname, as okay. I'm sure you would know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's done. And so is Weiwei. They're both mm -hmm. nicknames, but mm -hmm. it is family name and it is, it is okay. proper proper naming okay I, I just want to make sure yeah that is actually really important <laughs> it, it is it absolutely yeah cheng jeng versus jeng chen two very different people <laughs> um but yeah so with that he stables his horse and he goes to bed for the night we should well, go to bed. Well, well friends uh it looks like we got the not the lead in not an investigation and that's, see, see that's some very fine uh, horse riding there, uh, friend and Lona. Well, I only got to do it because Ichi found the horse, and you looked a little upset when you got it, so I assume it was very difficult to achieve. Um, and then Rufa, uh, the horse only listened to me because of you, so honestly, I couldn't have done it without you. Oh, that is very nice to say, friend Olona. And yeah. Rufa Ruf kind of gives a look at the horse once again, kind of that look kind of says, I'm doing the job, but don't put the pressure on me, Brett, you know? Uh, she yeah, grabs continue. the reins from Alona. Says, yep, I'm really glad. Um, everything worked out. Uh, yeah, we should get some sleep. I want to go return this horse. To the forest, okay. I'll, I'll be, I'll well, be back a, soon. A, th th thank whoever you got that horse from. Oh, I will. He's he's got a good head on his shoulders, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, I'll see y'all soon. She's gonna go uh, walk into the forest. Okay. Uh, you walk out into the forest with the horse. Uh, you know, and as you do. Uh, the horse finds kind of st kind of stomps its feet a bit, and it looks to you, and you can hear a voice uh, that just says, "I can get it from here." And these wings just come out again, and the horse just takes off. And as it goes off into the night sky, it just vanishes. But before you leave, you hear another voice, not the old man, and not the Jade Emperor of Heaven. But you hear another voice speaking dwarvish. And as you turn to see it in the pale moonlight that barely ekes across the empty pitch black night sky, you see a skeleton walking slowly in the night. And in dwarvish, it's saying, You have our secrets. You need to choose by the hand that measures and the eye that counts. You need to either keep our secrets or leave them be. What was the last word you said? Uh, you need to either keep the secrets or leave them be. Sorry about that. Okay. Ichi's gonna... Well, that's enough for tonight. And she's gonna leave. <laughs> uh, he the, the voice continues to yell louder in Dwarvish. Uh, you have our secrets. You have our secrets. Just keep like like yelling louder and louder. And he just keeps shouting, Choose. Choose. It's just like, we'll talk tomorrow. This is a lot for me. Ah, uh, <laughs> She's leaving the forest. As you, as you leave the forest, the last thing he says, the last thing the skeleton says is, remember, 
The eye ever measuring is watching. The guiding map needs to be written. And you, you have the long strider's secrets. And then his skeleton just <laughs> turns into a pile and gets eaten by the by the dirt of Shim. You it was those guys. Yep, hmm. yeah, yeah, she's like, put that here. Just you know, uh-huh. And she's just walking. <laughs> Get time for bed. And on that note, I have to switch my camera. I'm sorry, everyone. This camera looks bad, but my other one's gonna die. Proceed. All right. You're still Not bad. Oh, you're you still look amazing. What are you pretty. talking about? The I think you're... The and you look so cute. Uh... <laughs> Your green looks really good. Oh, it's so bright. Yeah. But anyway, proceed. Yeah. This I, it didn't need to be a thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So assuming everyone goes to sleep, you know, the, the, the sleeping music kicks in like do, 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 and the sun rises, uh, the rooster crows and, and life begins to kick up again. Uh, you're now back in the town that you first came to Shin and the one you're on right now, uh, Xiongjin. And it is hustling and bustling, the markets, the bazaars. Uh, once again, you see this giant minotaur with this big axe, and he's got these two... Um, human children kind of running around him he's like be careful kids remember we don't want to get you lost again now find that find that thing for mother before she goes back to the moon and they're like okay dad and he's just stomping around with this giant axe did this man's wife turn into the moon <laughs> uh, the moon i hate it okay it's, listen it's, i gotta give listen. you a point for that <laughs> I'm happy for you, Michael. So actually, Michael, you would know this. Your character would know this. Uh, you realize you're looking at a fairy tale in real life. You remember hearing a story uh, that was told to kids to help them go to sleep at night about uh, uh, a farmer who fell in love with a fairy, um, which is honestly a terrible translation, basically a demigod. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you're so beautiful. And she's like, thanks. You're so adorable and goofy. And he's like, I know I'm a farmer. It's what we do. And they fell in love. But the problem is, is that this was one of the eight fairies of like heaven. So the queen was like, what is your dumb ass doing? You can't be dating this guy. And she's like, but I love him. And she's like, that's stupid. Come back to the moon right now. And she's like, but I've been here for years. I have a family. And she's like, I didn't tell you to get knocked up, get back to the moon. And she goes, okay. And so she leaves her, her two kids and her husband behind. But as she's leaving, dad's like, listen, kids, we love mom, full stop. Yeah, we're going to get her back. How? I have a stupid plan. So in the fairy tale that your parents will tell you, the farmer disguised himself as an ox so that she could ride him as an ox up to heaven. But in doing so in the disguise, he basically like pulled a U-turn on the whole situation and was able to trick heaven to get his wife back along with the help of his kids. And apparently as the story goes, not in the original fairy tales, but what you're seeing in real life was that this man did do this. And in doing so, he turned into a minotaur, half ox, half human. Rufa's gonna lean over to Alona and go, and alone, Ada. You know how Rufa is always saying that uh, very strange and unusual things seem to follow us about. Uh, yeah. And he tells her the story. This is the cutest story I've ever heard. His wife turned into the moon. Uh, uh, I, I, Rufa does not think you get the point of it the whole, the whole thing though but the, the fact that why does things like this keep happening to us I think Rufa. at this time Ichi is like caught up with you guys she's like it's a really good question she just keeps walking <laughs> yes so um, you leave for the, the village, correct? Uh, before we do, 
-hmm. we're going to uh, restock on supplies here here in the city. And I'm going to wink, wink, nudge uh, Sydney. Rune of returning! Right, yes. Please, can I have a rune of returning so I can have a boomerang boot? Please, sir, can I have some boomerang? If you have the money to afford the returning rune, absolutely, you can buy it. Hi, one, house is still there. I won money from a fish. <laughs> Fish-based, magic-based base economies. <laughs> it's true, it's true. You got that magic fish money. Okay, so uh, I will say, I want to say the returning rune is pretty cheap. It's about 2,000 gold, I want to say. It was five. I have it. Oh, it is actual five? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Wait. It was five it's grand. Exactly, it's, it's exactly 5, five grand. Mm hmm Take all my money. Okay. You do it. Isuo looks at the money and goes, I'm so excited to, to build this for you. Do, you. do you want it on your hand wraps of heavenly peace? I don't know how that's going to return. What do you want it on? Ilona just takes out the boot and puts it in his, in their hands. You you want it? Okay. Uh, and then they take it, and you see their hands glow gold as they're chanting in Tezukan, and they just start moving their hands over the runes in the boot, and you see, like, snow melting into a cup of water. They merge and become one. And they hand you the boot... You now have a returning greater bully boot. Just the one, though? It's better this way. She takes the boot and puts it in her bag of holding. It's better this way. Oh, um, I, I want to point out, I thought you meant how much gold we got from the fish. The fish was 5,000. I think you're right about the rune of returning being two. You can also take all, consider it a tip for Isowo, because he always does nice things for us, and um, Alona doesn't know what to do with money. Um, yeah. So there, Isowo, thank you for letting us use your door forever. Uh, consider it door rent, I guess. I'll be happy to put this on uh, the bill. Don't worry about it. What matters is that you have the boot that you need and have a great journey, and I feel very terrible for the poor person you're going to be throwing this boot at. I don't. She walks out. So you now have the official booterang. Uh, the grand bully boot works just like a normal bully, uh, greater bully boot does with the, the powerful knockback. But also, if you throw it, uh, and I'll give it the, the property of 10 feet, it can come back to you. So you can throw that boot 10 feet. If it hits someone, you can knock them back up to 60 feet and then return to your hand. I'm overpowered at this point, and I feel great about it. <laughs> All That's right. Funny. So, uh, is you're, there any other you're business? That character you from Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> Who throws Wait. a shoe? You fight like a bloody woman, which is misogynistic as hell. But it was the nineties. It was. It was a weird movie, but it was. It's, I do. I yeah. I do fight like a bloody woman. The, ca the character's God name was. The, character theme was random task yep random task played by a former mma fighter and we're not gonna talk about him because his story does not end well no. at all no. so we're gonna just skip over that and i'm gonna ask i'll tell you guys afterwards um and uh so we're gonna say is there any other business that you need in this town hmm. I map uh Oh, could, could we could we could we buy like or rent a no like because I was thinking renting a wagon for us to travel on. What do you guys think? A wagon's good. A map is also good. And a we map, get a map. Yeah, we need to get a map. Yeah. We we don't want to like go there. We're supposed to go there, but we end up going the other way. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so the map is very cheap. We'll give it to you for a gold. Um, if you want to rent the cart that'll be 75 gold if you want to buy the cart that'll be 250 gold of course this comes complete with um you know a few standard horses nothing special but they can pull it and all the all the fixings to get them into the into the thing and uh, uh, we're, we're not going to be here forever so 
I'm voting rent. We we, we rent a U-Haul uh, <laughs> wagon and horse. So Rufa, though, does it work like we can we can turn it back in yes. somewhere else? Like we don't have to bring it back, you know? I, it, I, I believe so. They, they, they might have a, an office over at the village. Like we are franchise? Visiting. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, good, good, good. We're creating lore. <laughs> I love a good franchise. You know that. Yes, maybe a yeah. franchise that we can invest with in the future, perhaps. Yeah. You're, you're renting from... Uh, I can't think of a good horse pun. You for- Rich Hall. Ruich Hall. You horse. Right oh, if you're right. I was trying to make like an enterprise joke, but that's so much better. Okay. Uh, you're renting from you horse. Uh, you get you get a few horses and a carriage and you go about your business. It's it's a pretty long journey, like uh, Mashu said it would be, but it's not too bad. You have each other and, you know, your conversations. Uh, eventually, though, you do get to this town of Huja. It is surprisingly idyllic the grass is the most vibrant green you have ever seen the trees are the most vibrant green um these hills seem to be kind of rolling in tears and every single tier has a different uh, uh farming you see some of the patties being uh, uh you know basically having the rice being harvested. You're seeing uh, uh, vegetables growing on the second and on the third. You're seeing livestock everywhere. You see uh, this massive well in the center of town, complete with a dainty little cover so nothing untoward gets in the well. You're seeing these beautiful uh, yet simple stone and wood houses that are at least one or two stories tall uh, with sliding doors. Most of the doors are wide open. Uh, everyone, strangers and families alike, are just running in and out of everyone's homes uh, with the full trust of the community. You see this large uh, geometric perimeter square up on the hill, uh, open air, um, and wide open doors with these tall wooden walls, easily like 20, 30 wall, uh, 20, 30 foot walls. You see a, a, a living society. You see children at play. You see some children with long brushes just digging in the dirt and practicing their their letters, practicing their their uh, kanji. Thank you, their calligraphy. That's the that's what the proper way to do it. You see um, a tiny stone hut with what looks like a little fireplace and just smoke coming out, little gentle puffs. Can I just say, like, this is just like giving me vibes of like an Asian version of Belle's Village from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> I, I back it. Baker with this tray, like always. <laughs> um, I also want to ask: um, Has Rufa ever been to this village in his past? Yes. Unfortunately, mm. Rufa's going to kind of just put the hood up on his coat, kind of have down. He's like, like you know, acting like just you know the wagon driver. Mm-hmm. Your your wagon stopped uh, by this this youngish looking man who grabs her and she goes whoa 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 slow down there slow down there hello hi there uh you, you can call me jade rabbit uh i i am a census uh taker from the census bureau of the imperial court uh it's a pleasure to meet you and how can i help you in kujia rufa's gonna kind of nod like elbow alona um uh, hello, uh, we are here as a group, looks around, um, we are looking f- to interview some locals. We're from a newspaper that's being started in the city, and we want to do a special on your town, interviewing just a few people about their lives. He His eyes go wide, he goes, Oh my gosh, all my hard work for the Emperor has finally paid off. He's he's received my letters, he's listened to me. 
this is the best day of my life. I love the emperor. And he's finally returning all my letters. This is so exciting. Okay, great. Okay. Well, let, let me, please. I, it would be, it would be my honor if I could lead you through. I, I, I am, I am the, the census taker after all. I know this village very, very well. It would be my honor to take you around and, and help you find people of note to interview. Yeah, uh, we, um, we had a few in mind. So if you could take us to, uh, Hmm. Rufa whispers, uh, Chen Zing. Um, if you could take us to Chen Zing, that would be fantastic. We heard they are a fantastic fighter. And, um, you know, that would be very interesting. Catch the headlines of the papers. You know, we want to get them with a good hook. Alona looks at Ichi for approval. Uh... Well, as she said. It was, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, we're also here to try your town's cuisine. If you have any specialties, um, you know, and also if we will write a review mm -hmm. of the dining establishments in return for free food, you could get so much exposure um i am a little bit famous yes so it's kind of like i can influence people uh to want to come visit and uh so yes you give me free mm -hmm. us us free food and mm -hmm. I, you know yeah. i like tell people about it oh this is exciting this is a great day oh, sure. this is this is an this this is an auspicious day for you, Jade Rabbit. Not only is the Jade Emperor or uh, the the sorry the Jade Emperor, not only is the Emperor finally listened to all your letters, he sent you these wonderful people. He trusts you, and and he he welcomes you, and he's giving you exposure. That's basically as good as gold to the Census Bureau. Yeah, yes. I love that. Yes, of course, of course. Anything to make the Emperor happy, and anything to make we will be the we will be the best hosts. I promise. I promise. I promise. Wonderful. So happy to be here. Right. So, so, so f let's, let's do the food first and then, and then we'll go to see, you said you wanted to see who again? Um, uh, we want to see, uh, Chen Zeng, please. Okay. Oh, oh, interesting choice. Very interesting choice. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, okay, well, let's, let's do the food first. And then if we can still, if we can find him, I'll see about maybe mediating that interview. Oh, okay, well, let's, let's go get food first. He this takes you, is killing me. <laughs> he's taking you on this tour of uh, Hujia and he's sharing with you all the delicacies, all of their local village snacks, all their local village foods, the things that they eat you know, every day, as well as the things they eat for special occasions. And everyone is so excited, like they're over there, over their stove making. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Come on, come on, come on in, come on in. We're we're just cooking right now, and they're just giving you everything for free. Heaps of food, anything you want. It's probably the best and most genuine loving service you've ever received in a food exchange situation. Can can, can I ask, um, landlock river sea? This is definitely plains, like plains the southern okay. plains. Yeah. All right. Can I recommend the specialty of the village? Please do. Yeah, if you know, right. please. Um, I'm gonna say chow steam chow chu buns. And yeah. let's go with um ooh, knife shaved noodles with a uh, kind of a, a black vinegar uh, sauce. Ooh, yeah, absolutely. It's if I if I remember correctly, that would give it kind of this very a, a very a warm yeah a warm garlic tang with a bit of a meaty kind of umami mm -hmm. kind of flavor going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. we, we could say that you they put um like thinly sliced uh, shiitake type mushrooms in the noodles. It'd be very easy for them to grow, and the rice mm -hmm. would be fresh because it's literally taken from the patty out there mm -hmm. and it's cooked warm right there in well, front wheat. of you. Wheat, wheat, <laughs> wheat. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, so all this happens, and, he, and and Jade Rabbit is just bragging about it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything here is, you know, fresh from ground to table. You're gonna love it. Um, and uh, 
Oh, I suppose you want to be talking to Cheng Zheng now, don't you? Chen Cheng Zheng. Okay. Um, no, you can stay. You can you can no. stay if you want to. No, no, no. I'm I am a census taker for the Emperor of Xin. I will do my job. He will see that I am excellent, and I will do what I can for my emperor. Right this way, and he he kind of runs off, and he's like, "Come on, follow, follow, follow." You get to the farmland. And you see a bunch of farmers with like, uh, you know, like the, the sweatbands on and like the, the kind of hiked up and everything. And they're and they're they're getting their hands dirty. They're putting in the good work. And you see this young man, uh, just with one hand pulling, pull like just it's something that's taking them all their might. He's just going at it. And uh, Jay Rabbit kind of tucks his hands into his robe and he goes, "Census taker, Jay Rabbit." would humbly request the presence of Chen Zhang for the census. We have an interview from out of town, from the emperor. And this young man stands up. And you see everyone in Xin has had a very traditional style of haircut. It's all like they, they have these amazing ornate hats and pins and buns. They put them in. They all kind of tend to grow their hair long to some degree. This guy has a high and tight, shave sides, gelled up hair. He kind of looks, oh yeah? The little rabbit of the emperor has come to me. Okay, yeah, bet. Come on. This is a huge cultural thing. You've noticed everyone welcomes you like this. He's You're welcoming Jed that Rabbit like was a this. Huge cultural thing. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Rabbit panics. He goes, no, 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 I don't want to fight you. No, 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 no. Come here, little rabbit. Come here. No, I don't want to fight you. Okay. Well, then go away. Okay, fine. And he kind of scuttles off the side and gets like a pen and a paper. And he goes, but I'm still taking notes. Hi, my name is Chen Zheng. Sorry about that. I, I'm not trying to be rude. I don't trust that guy. What, how can I do for you? What, what can I hear? Uh, and he gives you a very formal Adolphon greeting with a big, like, handshake. How can I help you? Um, Ilona takes his hand. Hi there. Um, we are here to tell you the truth. Uh, you don't trust that guy. Probably because he kind of rats on whatever's going on with you to the emperor because that's his job. He means well. But um, we're here to basically inspect you to see if you're worthy. Hey, I'm just a student. I came here because I believe these people are having a hard time with their farmland. I got a strong back and a stubborn brain, so I'll, I just get to work. But I don't know. What do you, what do you need for me to be worthy? I don't know. Have you heard Alona of... Oh, no, Alona was going to look at you anyway, so please okay. go. Rufuga kind of, he has, to, you know, the hood kind of still kind of, you know, up and everything. Hmm. Does the word tiger mean anything to you other than the usual feline, cat, animal, pillar... Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a guy here um, a few weeks ago, I want to say, maybe a month ago, asking about some tiger. We told him we, we don't have any wildlife issues. We, we hunt just fine. We respect nature just fine. And he and I had a bit of a, a, bit of a fight. Cheater brought a spear to a fist fight. Not, not the greatest, but, uh, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen any tigers since or after. perception check do i uh, do you want to see if he's lying or telling the truth or yeah i want to see i, I want to see if he's lying okay. i want to see if he's being earnest or if he's just being nonchalant to cover something up okay oh dear lord it's a dirty 20 dirty 20 hmm, dirty 20? 20 you can tell he is genuinely not lying that's good he's just he's just yeah, no, guy showed up with a spear, challenged me to a fight. 
almost had him, but you know, it's hard to fight a spear when all you have is like, you know, shin mm. boxing and Adolphon boxing, you blend your style oh, together. Yes, and yes. It's great. But you know, it, it, right. I don't care well, what anyone says, you could be the greatest martial artist in the world. You're not going to beat a guy with a spear. True, true. That is very, very tough. Uh, in uh, Rufa believes uh, that was uh, uh, General Ma, I believe. Uh, Rufa believes. Oh yeah, General Ma Shu. Dude had a kick-ass horse though. It was a good horse. I wanted to pet his mane, but I wasn't allowed to. You know, imperial product. That ma- ew. That makes sense. Um, but you know what? Um, you have told us all that we need to know. I really appreciate you coming in here. Um, we wanted to interview because Alona looks at Ichi. This is the great Ichi Popton Papaqui, La Pacifica Dorita, uh, a grade A fighter in um, Asmacon and across the globe. Uh, we wanted to know uh, what your skills were like. And since you, uh, he beat him, right? He beat the general. That's confirmed ish. Uh, the general said that he won, but he felt terrible about doing it. He lost because he lost the people's support by fighting him with a spear. Exactly. Yeah, that's stupid. Like, yeah. Oh, God damn it, man. Um, <laughs> uh, opening a spear to a fist fight. Opening a fist to a spear fight. Ooh, wait, what style do you do, uh, Ichi? Because I, I spent some time in Adolphon Prime. I learned some Adolphon boxing techniques. Where, where are you from again? Oh, well, um, I've s- I spent a little bit of time in Adolphon Prime. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm originally from Osmocon. Uh, I've got a very, you know, like eclectic style. I would say right now I'm kind of really into chair. Uh, chair. Yeah, chair. Um, yeah, I'll show you huh. some time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I'd love to learn. Look, any fighting styles, I, I love to just take it and incorporate it into my own. So anytime you're, but, but I have to, because I'm helping out the farmers. So if you want to fight me, you got to join me in a good day, a good day work farming. And then we're well, going. If, if you ever do decide to uh, return back to at the farm, uh, Rufar with a couple of partners, uh, we, we do have a, uh, we have newly acquired a gym to uh, represent the fighters in uh, a newly acquired Coliseum. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that place. They kicked me out. They didn't like that I used my legs in a boxing match. What kind of person doesn't use their legs in a boxing match? Oh, that's, that's just a waste. Yes, true, true, true. Hands we, only, we, that's we, lame. We, 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 must, we must talk about that. That is a very legitimate way of fighting. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, it's okay. If you ever want to fight the fist of legend, that's what you used to call me back, back in Alphon. If you want to fight the fist of legend, just let me know. I'm so excited to learn from you, Ichi. I love it. I love it. Let's, let's do lunch. Um, and then let's fight. Yeah. All right. Sometime. Oh, by, by, mm-hmm. by the way, uh, are you familiar with... Uh, Two more inhab- two other uh, inhabitants of your uh, your village. Uh, a uh, Rufa takes out a piece of paper. Doesn't have anything written on it. Just w- takes it out as if he was reading from it. A a uh, Weiwei and a and a Mistress Wu. Oh, old man Weiwei. Oh man, that dude is so cool. He's a li- he's he's a little weird, but. I love I love talking to him. Yeah, he's he's in that stone hut with the the fireplace. Uh, never leaves it, you know. I so, sometimes I see him at night, but like he never leaves his hut. Uh, good dude though, good guy. Uh, um, oh, and Lady Way. Oh, she's the teacher. Yeah, yeah. She's she's very very sweet. Oh, she helps me with my math sometimes. We we talk about different teaching styles. Uh, I tell her about what I learned in the West and stuff like that. Yeah. And- do you uh, other than that do you know uh, anything um more about them uh way way used to be a strategist and retired uh he gets some crazy dreams and i mean miss Wu is nice until until she isn't so i don't know okay 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 what will we we might return uh we we, we have uh, many more uh how they say uh, the house calls to make good, uh, but uh, yeah, so, uh, we will try to return and uh, perhaps uh, we can go get some uh, some uh, uh, chow su buns. Oh, we love that. Thank you so much for your time. And again, if you ever yes. want to farm, let me know. We'll we'll be happy to repay you in more hospitality. Have a great day. Next. <laughs> so yeah, does anybody? 
mind if we go to Old Man Weiwei next? Let's go. Okay. So you leave Chen Zheng uh, to the fields and you go to the, the stone little dome with the fireplace that is Weiwei's hut. So you go inside. Uh, there's no door, by the way. You, just, you can just walk right on in. As you go inside, you see this giant pot bubbling on a fireplace that's kind of receded into the ground. You see massive boxes stamped with different sigils of different countries. You see a big star chart on the wall of the night sky and all the different constellations. No windows, except for the fireplace, where the smoke from what's in the cauldron just comes out. You see very unusual things. On the wall, you see a long metal tube, the long wooden attachment. It kind of has a very odd hexagonal backing to it. It has a, has a weird metal hook with a ball at the end of it. On the other wall, you see uh, hooks holding different magical artifacts one about the size of your palm and it seems smooth like glass but the minute you get up to it, it lights up immediately and then fades away as you walk by all these unusual magical artifacts and unknown items hang upon their wall and you see what looks like this huddled mass of clothes thrown together like a pile and then suddenly a nose pops out <laughs> Who's in my hut? Uh, as we walk in, can I just say, Rufa, like, he literally knocks on the wall and actually says, knock, knock. Oh, yes. Yes, being polite. Very good. Mm, but who is knocking at we? His hut. Mm, yes. Ooh. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, we, we are from the city. Uh, we are uh, uh, we are looking for a... Uh, Rufa takes out that blank piece of paper again and like, a hey, master way way. Long old gnarled hands slide from underneath the clothes, grip the, the, the cloth over the nose, pulls back. You see an old man with long white hair and a long wispy white beard and one eye that just looks like a night sky and the other milky white. And he looks at you with these eyes and goes, Oh, that would be me. I am Weiwei. Well, when do we knew me? That's my name now. <laughs> I got two names. There are many people who uh, walk this world uh, with uh, many, many names. Uh, the more names you pick up, the the more interesting you could be. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I know this, Jin Shui. Yeah. Rufa, you go by many names. <laughs> and you probably may have one or two more when this investigation is done. How do you know? Rufa never announced his name. No, why would you need to announce your name? Isn't that right, Alona? How... Would he know that? <laughs> Can I do a religion check on his eyes, please? Go right ahead. Thank you. God, actual damn it. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, that's, that's a 16. 16. You can take a solid bet that he possesses an eye of Vigilmat. Ah, there we go. Um... And when that just Rufa, like Rufa, um, he's half, he's pretty omniscient at this point. So uh, I don't know if he knows everything, but he knows quite a bit. Um, Alona approaches Wei Wei and says, it's really nice to meet you. Do you already know why we're here? <laughs> yes, you're out hunting tigers or the dragon himself. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't necessarily want to hunt the tigers for the dragon. We want to get to the bottom of why there needs to be a dragon hunt in the first place. 
<laughs> yes, this, this I can answer. This I can tell you. Yes. Uh, well, hold on. Where did I put it? And he gets up and he stands up and you realize he's wearing nothing but his underwear in his old emaciated frame, just kind of hanging out like the dude. You know, he's kind of chilling. He goes, Where did I put it? Where did I... <laughs> right. His, his eye pops out of his head and he's holding what looks like pure cosmos in his hands. And then he goes like with his one milky eye. So he's kind of, you know, feeling his way there. He gets to the cauldron, takes it. And then just starts sprinkling it into the cauldron. And as his, as his, ca- uh, his cosmic eye hits the cauldron, and starts to bubble. And the room starts getting dark and darker still until finally black smoke starts to rise out of the cauldron. Poof. Out of the fire, little little fire tunnel. And then suddenly, stars shoot around him. All around you, you see stars in the night sky. You recognize constellations from your homeland. You recognize the stars of Asmakan, the stars of Adolphan, the stars of Or, even the stars over Acadia, and the stars of Shin. And he's sitting with this one milky eye, just laughing, cackling mad. And he goes, listen well, and I'll tell you why. That we made heroes to rise and gods to die. And that is where we're going to end episode 10 of Edge of Legend. That doesn't sound ominous at all. I love your rhyming brain. Wow, that was so <laughs> ominous and good. It's almost as if somebody wrote it, but I know you didn't. It just came out of your brain. That's amazing. Yeah, I kind of made it up on the spot, but it's what I do. Thank you. Uh, well, let us say our goodbyes, starting with the investigator of this entire divine conspiracy mr michael powell tell them who you are and where they can find you on that sweet sweet internet well as always i am michael powell aka mr kapow and you can find me all over the internet on my social medias which is usually at mr kapow that's m-r-k-a-p-a-o or my facebook page which is facebook.com slash michael powell does stuff because i do a lot of stuff like my youtube channels fantastic tales of adventure and Dastardly Tales of Horror. Also, uh, my upcoming schedule right now this week is tomorrow, that's Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be on uh, Toyzilla Network at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Toyzilla Live, where I host a show show called, uh, host a toy show where we talk about toy news and collectibles. And then on Friday, I believe, we are going to be on Jahananon, we're uh, at a let's see, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time as well for Modern Age for a three-fold game where I play a kind of your, uh, your, your clueless, I'm going to say he's actually slightly himbo at this point, uh, pizza delivery guy who always states the obvious with a little Scooby-Doo, with a little shaggy from Scooby-Doo thrown in. Stand a himbo. Um, called Max. So, yeah. It, it may or may not be inspired by Mighty Max. Love that. Love that. Go back. Well, next up, Sam, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Well, hello. I'm Sam Sterling, and this was Frog the Mug. Uh, thanks for a great show, everybody. This was a fun one. Uh, you can find me online at Hey Sam Sterling on all the internet places. Um, all the finest internet places, including TikTok, where I make dumb jokes, just like I do on here, and Twitter, where I make dumb jokes, but in text format. Uh, and that's all. Love you guys. Yeah, and I love your jokes. They're the best jokes. Uh, that being said, Senor Bino, please tell them who you are and where they can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hello, my name is Sydney Rubino. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rubino. That is TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and I'm not here with these lovely, amazing people on Wednesdays. Um, on Saturday nights, I have another stream on the Exquisite Corpse Presents um, channel on Twitch. It is a D&D 5e homebrew game that takes place in a neo-punk, post-apocalyptic, very gay, chaotic world. Um, so if that sounds like something you're into, it's a lot of fun and, 
and catch us there 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Saturdays. Nice. Well, I guess it just leaves little old me. My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. You can find me, you can friend me. Let's have fun. This is your invitation to stalk me online. I won't regret that. I will. Uh, but anyway, uh, please come find me. Let's have fun. When I'm not here with these absolute legends, Wednesday, 8 to 11 p.m., you can find us here, same net time, same net channel, Mondays, 8 to 11, with Wayward Arcadium. This week, we had Parents' Day. It was chaotic, and it was bananas and next week we're gonna have parents day part two come see what happens when your favorite galarian adventurers go to college and their parents show up and get into fights over who's gonna date their son it's crazy um so see that uh this friday yeah this friday i'll be with wes again at wes underscore irl doing yeet for initiative as we continue the rebellion of brayden uh we've barely survive fighting the elite squad that tried to kill us and hopefully uh as ryak i can maybe make up for my past and fix a few things i broke uh, but yeah more announcements as we can if we can let you know there's a lot of really crazy stuff happening in this world um thank you so much and before i forget i want to thank joe the best TD and good friend of the show for, for doing everything. He got us in and he's getting us out and he's doing an awesome job. We love you, Joe. Thank you so much. I uh, hope you beat Elden Ring because I've heard it's hard. Uh, but that's it. That being said, we are now going to officially be rating Blackwater D&D. And I think we need to have a battle cry. What should the battle cry be? Mm. Let me see. I don't know. Uh, horse girl horse, magic. Horse girl magic. Horse girl magic. Effie Burton was in the chat, you know, saying like, yeah, Lona, do it for all the horse girls. So I think, I think horse girl magic, some variation of horse girl and magic. All right. I like all right. Yay. Yay. I see, I see Joe in the chat. Love you too, my dude. All right, everyone. We're going to be raiding in three, two, one horse girl magic go